fine. I don't mind. I ain't shy from cameras. I just sometimes can't keep an erection with the hot lights in my face. I know what you mean. Welcome to the Mad Scientist Tea Party. Check it out. Guess what? This is the Mad Scientist Tea Party. And you have been, uh, um, you have been, um, listening to the Mad Scientist Tea Party and watching the wallpaper in the background move. But there has been something moving on the screen and there has been noise coming out of the box. And we've been in there talking about, uh, the quality of the noise coming out of the box. And we're, we're, we're still working on audio quality. We've had a situation where, um, oh, somewhere maybe near the end of last week, apparently one of the uh, um, decoders went down for some reason or other and appeared to uh, reset it itself to a, a to a default volume level that was, uh, you know, low and unacceptable. So we uh, we. Uh, we have found this out to be true now, and we've reset it, I believe. So we're, we're hoping that this will always be uh, at the proper level. That's right. All right. Let's see. I like to just take all EQ off and go with the uh, straight sound of the microphone itself. We're, we still have uh, sibilance and splatters and uh, little poppy noises and various things like that. And we're going to chase them down with an oscilloscope sometime uh, in the next few days, hopefully. And I know this is all so exciting, but this is this is uh, genuinely mad scientist stuff. And it just it just dawned on me that I have a rant and uh, and I have a I have an answer to. Um, a lot of the problems I have an answer to how it is that we've how it is we've gotten ourselves into this situation. Okay, and so I'm and so I shall so I shall rant. Let's see. We well wait a minute. Let's see something here. Listen to this.
Okay, now we want just we want just enough of that in the background. Not enough to drown out what I'm saying or anything like that, but just enough of that in the background to imply an urgency. All right? Keeps the keeps the tension level up on the vibe there. Okay, the vibe is the vibe is there now. All right, now here's the deal. Okay. Uh, now I, I I did I I, I did once hear the, uh, a Baptist preacher that preached from the pulpit. He said, um, and this is the name of my sermon today. Digital, he says. Digital, digital. I'm looking at my at my me at my levels here. Digital. Is just another word for devil. Are you listening to this out there? Okay. Digital is just another word for devil. That's right. Um, and here's how that works. I have it all figured out. A lot of the problems we got going on uh, right now in our world, in our, in our, I'm coming a little closer to home. Than, um, than the Iraqi war and all that kind of stuff. Although I think the war in Iraq could be, could co- probably be tied in to a large degree too. But the, um, let me see how the tea's doing there. That's getting hot. Okay. How, um, how is it that we've wound up in that war? Uh-oh. Okay, I'm going to have to come back from the 420 roll and explain how it is that computers have have stolen our economy and destroyed our economy bad decisions we're letting we're letting the machines make the decisions for us is what it boils down to and that's not a good idea i'll explain how that works when i get back I like that background. That's always been one of my favorite backgrounds. And Michael was here a little while ago from the from the wallpaper project, and I think he's totally awesome. And uh, you know, I'm such a fan of what they do. And um, and here it is, and we don't know what it is. It's just gonna be called 420 roll number six. And I think it might be the chicken resurrection, but you know, I can't even tell you for sure what it is. It's just what's gonna roll. And uh, because it was the first 420 roll in the book that I saw, and um, and and that's kind of the, that's that's pretty much the deal here, guys. Oh my God. Oh dear. Oh my goodness. <laughs> did you show that to Jonathan? Did, did, will he have little ones? Let's hope not. He broke. That's the sad part. We were out there trying to fix one. Did he ever work? I mean, did you? He didn't. I, when I bought him, I just figured his batteries were dead, so I put in new batteries. And that wasn't it. Let's see. Computers are good. 
you want to put him up there, right, right in front of your teacup or something that you know, will fit there. <laughs> my next patient. I'm Marsha Elbier, surgeon today. Just tell me, what kind of symptoms have you been having? Mm -hmm. All right, well rest assured, don't worry, you're in good hands. My team and I will take very good care of you and you'll be ready for release within the next couple of hours. Okay nurse, take him away. It's time to get you under the anesthesia. that in for you. Okay. Just about ready. Just take a few more deep breaths. The Was that? Oh, the bill? Well, here. You're watching the 420 roll. Ground, white knuckled, nails cut palms, dig at eyes, peeling flesh, theirs and mine, vibrating at a damaging frequency between lethal explosions, sweat pouring, blood dripping, never dries. A toxic system 
to spread unseen in blinded masses to rot in pits, viral glass to be collected from rancid corpses, ground then soaked in reducing chemicals, extract the living specimens, incinerate detritus, exterminate superfluous populace. Good morning. Welcome to the Pleasure Saucer. Always, Cry Theater and Cry with Fire. She dropped it, that's right. Right. This was the 420 roll. Ah, uh, now, now back to the rant. <laughs> All right, just a moment. Oh boy. Just a moment, please. I liked that 420 roll. That had some of my favorite little things in it. It had the chicken resurrection and it had the 
Got the fire twirlers. And I'm sorry that I put that section in there right where she drops it. That's, that's not something she does a lot, you know. But about, about all of them drop the fire sometime, you know. And that's, um, gee, what happened? Boy, that was the way that uh, piece ended. It's just shaped static. That's why it sounds like this. Okay, now to the rant. Now, how does it all, how does it all work out? How is it, how is it that, how is digital? Just another word for devil. I have to look at my, my levels at the same time here. Okay, now here we go. I'll just turn this down and I'll just sort of lean into it. Because that's what I want to do anyway. I kind of want to lean into this one. And uh, mess with my little thing here and prop my mic up. Okay. Turn them down. Still want a little more than that. All right. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. Too much. Some time back, and I mean some years ago, I began to notice certain things about the digital domain, and uh, and one of them was that the grand, the grandest game of all, you know, beats out Space Invaders. And, and, and beats out um, Grand Theft Auto and beats out everything. The, the grandest game of all has been called Windows. But that's not the point of the rant. It's just, that's just an observation I've made about the digital domain. Um, sometime back, years back, I began to notice that um, business was being done and I mean back as far as 10, 20 years back, I really know, not that it hasn't always been done this way, but I noticed, I began to notice that business was really being done according to the bottom line. And that, I mean, and that's the way business is being done. But with the, um, with the rise of the computer to give a more efficient bottom line, more and more the decisions in business um, were being made according to the bottom line and and actually human input was being taken away from the equation. And I was seeing business matters, um, uh, you know, decided that would that would be um, harmful into harmful to the environment. That was the first thing that really started cluing me in. Was I was seeing business decisions made that were um, that were not human friendly. That the uh, business decisions that were were really not good for the workers and and would make me uh, wonder if they would even be good for management. They were, however, good bottom line decisions, which had been made basically by a computer. People found that if they if they you know they could run the numbers, they could they they had designed programs that could take enough um, variables into account about how uh, an operation was being done that would that uh, and 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 could uh, the and the people who followed those according to what the computer told them uh, showed better profit margins and it was plain and simple uh, now now it could be that the the factory had a smokestack and uh, and the um, and and polluted the atmosphere uh, and there was an option here for a uh, a clean smokestack to be built, which would be a fairly expensive thing. 
which might be run around the board table or whatever. The, you know, those uh, in, in charge might consider this option, whether or not forced by the government, might consider, you know, well, are we going to are we going to upgrade to um, to a system that doesn't pollute? And they and they'll look at the at the at the price of that and they might con- consider that. Well, then the main bookkeeper guy comes in and he's run the numbers on the computer. Well, now, it, it doesn't take a genius. And I'm betting the guy's not one. All right. But he's got a computer. Right. He's put the numbers in. Well, of course, the profit margin for this year compared to next year uh, with the only variable put in being whether or not they use money this year to build a a very expensive, clean smokestack is going to show bottom line less profit this this year due to the fact that that money has been spent for um, for a clean smokestack that could be just put back as more profit and invested and show dividends, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, um, so he shows up at the meeting and as they discuss everything, he says, well, here's the bottom line. It's, it, you know, we're, we will, we will show a poorer showing to our um, stockholders if, if we do this. So the motion to consider um, a smokestack is a clean smokestack is shot down and they continue to pollute. Uh, This decision has been basically made by a computer. You can look at the computer. You see what the computer tells you. You see the bottom line. And and it's obvious you can't argue with the the bottom line. Uh, Hence, the... Decision making power has been given to the computer, and um, and the, has and has been taken away from human beings. Now, I, the the reason I noticed this was because I was seeing decisions made that were not good for human beings. You know what? The computer doesn't breathe air, so the computer doesn't care about the air pollution. The, the computer does not drink water. So the computer does not care about polluting the water. But that does not, even though the, the computer's decision cannot be argued with, that does not mean that the computer's decision is a good decision. Okay. Now, like I say, I've been watching this for years, and I finally watched it into where we're at now. And and I suddenly realized that it's part of the same process. We have banks that um, took on predatory uh, predatory loan practices. And uh, and we have people losing their houses and and all kinds of things like that. Uh, basically all in the name of making a fast buck when they made it and stuff like that. And these decisions were made by the computers. It was simple. to You could run the numbers, and it was very easy to see. How the, the people let the computers tell them how to act. They, they run the numbers, and they say, hey, the more loans you give out, the da 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 the more income comes in for each loan that's put out there's all these charges and there's this and that and the other and then and then they you know basically computers have no um no morals uh computers are not concerned with if people um lose their homes as a matter of fact if if um if 50 percent of the home owning population lose their homes and become renters, uh, the pu- computer can probably show that that's a more profitable situation there than uh, than when these people owned their homes. But see, the computer is not taking into account community, and com- the computer is not taking into account uh, uh, human beings, and computer is not taking into account ethics or morality or human suffering 
or anything like that. Computer is only taking into account bottom line. And if we follow bottom line and let the computer tell us what to do, uh, yeah, we can show more profit. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've shown so much darn profit, uh, we're all almost bankrupt. And is that, because, except, of course, perhaps for the very rich. Now, it is possible that the very rich own more and a larger percentage than they ever have and are making money hand over fist in a fashion that they never have because they didn't have the efficiency of the tool of the computer. That, that kind of efficiency has never been known to control such a large mass of people uh, so uh, precisely as they're able to now with computers. And so those that, uh, that would, uh, would, would make, make their fortune and prey off of, uh, you know, the population uh, are, can do so so effectively now uh, like has never been done before in history. And they can uh, take their winnings, if you will, and, and leave the country. What, whatever country can uh, provide their services for them at the lowest rate and uh, will be used to do so and whatever um, country they choose to harvest will be it, it will be done and and that's and that's the way things are happening and that's because human beings are not uh, um, or at least very few human beings uh, are making the decisions. I highly suspect that no human beings are making the decisions. The decisions are so, um, what is the word, so detrimental to all human beings that it appears to me that that <clears throat> some force from outside of our planet must be making these decisions because who would want to pollute the atmosphere that their own grandchildren are going to have to live in, or do they just think that they'll have enough money to turn their mansion into a, a filtered air bubble? You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, it, it's really hard for me to see unless, uh, the, you know, to me it makes as much sense that some alien influence is um, is making the decisions in or, order to turn our atmosphere into their atmosphere or to turn our atmosphere into some atmosphere that is that is not healthy enough for us to be any kind of threat to them should they want to um, uh, use our planet for some other uh, use than uh, raising human beings on. Anyway, that's, I mean, I, I can't speak definitively on this right now because it's just, it's, it's, it's pretty far out and I don't really have either enough information or, or haven't uh, correlated enough. Perhaps I need a computer program to, to help me figure that one out. But <clears throat> the, uh, the bottom line is that um, computers have made a lot of the decisions and the human beings have been taken out of the mix. Now, along with that rant, I have to say that the, uh, what's going on in, uh, in politics is uh, uh, goes along hand in hand right with right with all of that, and uh, even the uh, the fact that they've geared up the primaries uh, so uh, so much earlier this year has served as a total smokescreen or a, a total distraction, if you will, um, from uh, taking care of the business that truly needed to be needs to be taken care of, which is the business of impeaching the regime that's in power and getting them out. And they have secured their position to the end of their term by, by, by bringing on the impression, oh, the next regime is going to come in and save everybody and also look at this, look at this, and don't look at us. Don't look at how much damage we can do now from, from now even now until the end of our term with, uh, with no obstacles in our way and no accountability on our part, uh, we, we can uh, uh, absolutely uh, destroy the economy. 
and, and destroy the uh, American way of life and, um, um, and, and, make, and make a tidy profit for ourselves and our friends. Uh, in in the process, uh, apparently seems to be what's going on, and um, and then and then do we think that let's say the Democrats, whoever uh, the next regime who comes into power, what all the uh, all the uh, power that the executive branch has has taken to itself and all, you think the next president is going to go? Oh well, that just wasn't right. I want to give it all back. Why, no, I don't believe that they're going to make motions to give it all back. They're going to, they're going to want to use it, uh, too. That makes the presidency um, that much more appealing, doesn't it? And, and on and on it, it goes. Uh, when that much power is given to the executive branch, there's going to be trouble. You know, it's going to be misused. There's, it's just That's why there were checks and balances. And we had far from a perfect system to start with. But you know, I don't. I, I thought we were doing pretty darn good. Um, and there's been problems all along, and there's been crooks in office, and there there were robber barons back back uh, before the depression that caused the depression. But it's all it's all come back, and it seems to have come back with possibly an uglier face than it ever had. You know, and I've talked with older people, people that are, believe it or not, there are people out there that are, are older than I am, and they've seen more than I ha- have. And I ask them, has it ever been this way before? Or have you ever seen this kind of regime? And they say, no, it has never been this way. An exciting experience I would never forget. I was suddenly aware of every small detail in the room. My senses increased a thousandfold. For the first time, I began to see things I had never noticed before. I began to float up and away from my body as my brain seemed to be held in the grip of a giant pipe. My temples were pounding. Everything around me became suddenly unreal, as if in a dream. I guess I'll, I'll leave a little right in there, just softly in the background. The um, the tea is ready. Hey, the tea is ready. And guess what? We have ginger lemon creams that, that Judson, and I guess I should say also Robert, Casey Waters, sent for us today and they're yummy and there's other people in the building that I expect to come to tea and do you think they're coming to tea why no they're sitting back in the other room just talking to hear themselves I figure instead of sitting in here and talking and I'm going to go get somebody and bring them back Tea's ready.
disco music in the background, but now uh, too you want to which uh, microphone do you want the the little flat one? Maybe slide that around towards you, see if it. Yeah, there you go. That's probably good enough. Yeah. You, you know, talk, yeah. Talk to me. Let me see. Hello, what. hello. Yeah. I'm Duncan. You dunk. <laughs> you know, talk to me some more. Say hello. Hello. Oh, you're good. Is it working? Oh yeah, you, it's working great. Uh -huh. Good deal. Yeah, it sounds so natural, I can't even tell it was coming over the microphone. Mm -hmm. And how do you like these? I like them a lot. Ginger lemon creams. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Aren't they? They're good, aren't Ginger's they? Ginger's wonderful. Mm hmm. Ginger really wakes you up. Mm -hmm. Judson sent these to us. Uh -huh. Pretty cool. It's raining out, I think. It's getting colder. On this fine Thursday. Who'd you have on your 420 roll? I had the I had the chicken resurrection again. All right. Mm -hmm. Did you install your sound box? Your um, last time I hear you had the big box, and you were messing with the wires. Yeah, not exactly. No. <laughs> um. It's still in progress. Yeah. No, I br didn't bring it in today. Actually, it's, it's in one. Uh, I've gone back to a smaller box, mm -hmm. same brand but a, a, a different model. And um, I don't know if I have any cream. I don't think I do. So, um, <sighs> turns out I didn't put out all the props. Yeah, the props. So. I thought I would. Oh, you're set up. Mm -hmm. here's, here's the one I was after that made me remember it was this. Okay. Because you see this this cup here, which is my teacup, I had all the spoons in it, right? And um, I want to get the spoons out of it so that I can, uh -huh. so I can put tea in it. <laughs> And I've decided we've been we've been informed that uh, not only is this stuff right here bad for you, bad for you, yes. Oh yeah. But that it's, it's the, apparently the majority of the company, or certainly a, a major portion of it, is either owned by Cheney or Rumsfeld or somebody like that. The sugar company? No, yeah, the the. the does not use the the name of right. the, you know what I mean. Yeah. But make that the people who make that chemical. Oh, okay. See what I mean? Well, hey there. Will, will you be speaking? Maybe. Huh? Maybe. Because I'm going to turn your mic up if you're going to speak. Okay. okay. Now your mic is turned up. Yay. Microphones for me. This would be a good name for a band, huh? I can't Pretty tell. Psychedelic. Psychedelic. The phenol clecotornix. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't even. <laughs> yeah. If you can't pronounce it, it probably wouldn't be a good name for a band. P H E N Y L E. You probably shouldn't well, use it. There's Instruits and the Neubauten, and I can't pronounce that. There's what? Instruits and the Neubauten. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. That's what I always say. And then people. Ah! <laughs> and then people who, who know always fuss at me and go, that's not the way you say it. Now Jonathan's leaving. I'm gonna turn his mic off. Yeah. <laughs> this multiple. I noticed the sounds a lot better on, with the multiple mics. Even when when the music came in. We're working on it. Yeah. We're working on it. Uh, we're working on it on all ends. You made. Yeah. yeah. There is something. I want. I want to. Uh, let me do this. Okay. I'm gonna turn. Yes. Yes. That's right. It's a takeover. Oh, we are not listening to that. If I'm taking over, I'm taking over fully. How about them apples? It's a takeover. Yaman. What's up, my peoples? It's a takeover. I'm your host of the tea party this evening. DJ419. Awake. Way before he's supposed to be. The sun is even out. 
I'm not supposed to be awake until the sun goes down. Because that's when we do the Hot Minute Show. Oh, good. They're locked out. <laughs> so if, uh, yeah. if you're feeling froggy on Sunday evenings, you can always uh, check out thebluecho.com at 7 p.m. I was going to read the Lucky Boy. Yeah, read, read. I was going to read the, the ingredients on the... If you go back over to your seat now, I will give you... The, the, I will turn your mic up. <laughs> even put a, the Blue Echo dot com Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Or check out MySpace slash The Hot Minute Show. That's the one. Wait a minute, The Blue Echo. Mm-hmm. Is that your, your show? Yep. Wait a minute. The Blue Echo is a... Sh- that's, the, that's the station, right? Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm on it. That you can get. Okay. Now, wait a minute. All right. Okay, now I'm going to turn your mic up. Okay, there you go. Soon to be a TV show. Yeah. Okay. All TV. I'll come film it. Now I'm going to give you also... I already got my camera operators. What I really need is an editor. <laughs> a free one. I'll pay. I'll pay for an editor. A free editor. That's, editor that's hard to find out. I just said I will pay for an editor. That's not a free editor. I know. I just, I'm we just see, saying it's, it's hard to find a free editor. <laughs> how often do you need editing? It is very hard to find a free editor. How often do you need editing? Uh, every day of my life. I have a backlog of 70 hours of video I'd like to put on the channel. Okay. And what is it? For every hour of did you, video, it's 24 did you have hours of editing? For every hour of... <laughs> if you're What's lucky... The ratio? It, it depends on. It depends. I know my ratio to get a thirty-second piece was, was four days. <laughs> That's not a. No, I mean, they In that case, I can't pay you a rate. Yeah. Did right. I just out myself of a job? I need somebody a little more efficient. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. You need some gorilla editing. Well, that's been my problem. Is like I'm relearning the software as I'm editing, so it's taking a lot longer than it should. Aren't we all constantly relearning? I mean, that's all you do is relearn the software as you, you know, unless unless that's what you sit and do all day long, twenty four hours a day, which is what is not which is quite feasible considering how long it takes. You know, I mean. Yep. Well, I was up till two in the morning last night editing my intro. Your in- intro. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's almost done. And all I had to do was right. say and how his long name. Does, and, ha- and, and, and how long does the intro last? 30 seconds. 30, thir- 30 second 30 intro. 30 seconds, and I've been working on it for three weeks. <clears throat> and how many hours do you think you have into this 30 second thing now? I would say anywhere between 20 and 30 hours. Uh-huh. Hello. I... Hmm, that's weird. No, I sent it at five or whatever. Okay. Yeah. I just sent it now. I'm out. A picture. Huh? Oh, because uh, yeah, you're out of the six, picture. Five thirty. Out of the now. picture. Well, I thought Jonathan was going to read the condoms. I could be out. Let me well, see. once you get here, no, I don't. Mind. Let me see. All right. I have to move. Wait a minute. This way. Wait a minute. Oh, this way. Okay. Yeah, that's you. better. I'll be right. I like that. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm. I had the job fair today. The and job went, you had it today at AB Tech. We had the hospitality job fair. It went very well. Yeah, tell us about. It. Is it over or is it? It's over. It was today from nine o'clock in the morning to noon, and then interviews from one to two. And, and how many um, we had people uh, over, showed we up? Had over thirty recruiters, and I think about three hundred people showed up uh, between students, members of the community. Um, and uh, getting jobs. So okay, 300, really th- 30 recruiters and 300 It'll, people. Uh, Does that, so that's 10 people per recruiter. I guess so, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's actually a really good ratio. It's a great ratio. That's a really um, good ratio. My, hey, John. My, my favorite story was I, I helped a woman and a gentleman get out of their car with two kids in the stroller and help them in, and they went to the job fair. So it, we really we reached the community. We reached the students, we reached other colleges that came, we reached high schools that came, we had seven high schools come, come by and did tours. Yeah, um, you're cold. But that story, <laughs> you know, these people came from the community looking for a job in, hot, in, in, in restaurants and hotels, sure and they came to our college and came to the job that fair. And I think they got a job, I think, you know, they, I saw them wheeling around. And, how about the Pretty students? Good, like, Did the students oh, sing yeah, the farewell? Well, I spoke to all the recruiters, the and they were happy. They each got... What? Or stack of resumes. They were happy with the, you know, with the response. Uh, a lot of contacts. So can't do that. A lot of, well. lo- a lot of recruiters okay. saying we'll probably be back next time. 
Oh, yeah. yeah right? They were thing. very happy. They were very happy. Let's say this is one of the best and, ones we've, uh, one of these kind of events we've been to. I got to, to, I got to meet the lieutenant governor and, you put it uh -huh. the and the president of the college. And, and then I went on a college the, tour um, with other students in an entourage. Um, mm -hmm. Can't do that. And I got to bring the lieutenant never, no governor to the job fair and talk well, about Matt, the hospitality industry and the importance of He must be confused about what actually happened. In the community. What do you think actually happened? Yeah. Pretty awesome. It was like, well, got five people. But, uh, so okay. like so, that, that was so if you have something coming up, he did up that. I don't know how he did it, and I've okay. never seen anybody do it, and I don't know how he would have done it. What did okay. he do? Who did it? Matt Howard is saying that he used he put a disc in one computer, and had all computers up there burning discs for him, and I don't think he through did the that. network. I don't think he did that. Yeah, okay. you can't we, you can't network without a you know the right the right key. Yeah, I don't think he did. Well, that. I know that he had to get the key from you to do it. That's no, he didn't get anything from me like that. Oh, okay. All right. So, so, so Maybe do we you have a security another, breach. another major fracture? Around. So, did it? <laughs> would you say that you do you feel like now that you've made a um, contribution to the community, or that you've made a, a, a I was going to say a, a connection with the what did you call him uh, the lieutenant governor? Oh no! I just I just was was fortunate enough to talk to her about the job fair and and, and the importance of of hotels restaurants uh -huh. in this area and what we provide that it's 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 you know well yeah it's one of the, it's, it's one of the main thing okay yeah. do you want to know what's There's going plenty, on T wise the lowest unemployment rate. Actually, I was wondering, this one is steeped and ready okay. all right this is place. really close to it maybe. Those two are, are, are also close. Came, we, Those we are both floral teas. They have the, 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 like South jasmine Carolina, and such Virginia, in them. Um, uh, they're all Georgia. excellent. I have, rogue hair attacking yeah. I have four Georgia, different Tennessee uh, excellent teas. Uh, so take take. Hotels, oh, you got one. Clubs. Did you get this one? Yeah, yeah I got uh, that one. Fantastic. Okay. They had a lot of, lot of me, diversity sorry. and. Uh, what were you looking for? Milk, actually. Um, I don't unless there's some in the fridge that we don't have any. I don't think there is any. I, did, I forgot to stop and get any. There's a variety of teas today. Yeah, What's four four different teas that are fabulous. What's this one? That one is jasmine. Jasmine. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. How are you? I'm good. That one I'm is good. this one right here. Is it supposed to be light colored? Or is it not right? It's just it's just it's just started to steep, but oh, okay. it's that right there, and it is fabulous, Jonathan. And you see how I've put a little check on the side of the box? It's because as it's because I don't read Chinese that well, <laughs> you know. And and sometimes I just have to which I have ones to. Are good, which ones aren't? And the labels are very. A lot of them are similar, close enough. They basically the style looks so much the same that it could be. They Good often, pictures, but you'd be like, hey, I think I like that one. <laughs> they often say basically exactly the same thing on the on the label, you know, like they got somebody to translate something into English, and they say we're going to put this on all our tea, right. you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, because they probably have just as much of a hard time figuring out what it says. <laughs> <laughs> As we do, so they don't know which to put on which, and they just come up with a good generic that says, "Oh, this tea is very good," and and after steeping long time, blah 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 blah, whatever, you know. <laughs> uh, funny words, funny words, funny words. And they put it on their tea, and then and then they put them in a little fancy box, and each but each box has a different picture. If you right. look, if you look at it, I mean, if you look at it, that's completely different. This is like red rooster, or this is like right. rooster tea. You know, it's a white rooster. Um, we'll call this one River Rock. River Rock, and we'll call this one Rooster. Rooster T. White Leghorn. That could be White Rooster. <laughs> River Rock and White Leghorn. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but the River Rock is really good. It's some of the Rock Tea. Let's see. Hold that up. I can I can read some of the Chinese. Oh. On the hold it up. You know. Now that is a male chicken, correct? On there. Mm hmm. That would be it is. Tea. It is a male so chicken. So it would be a cock tea. Cock tea. Cock tea. So we would call multiples of those. We have Red Rock and cock tea. No. Well, cock tea. Cock tea. Yes. Well, we just have one. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> we just have one, so it's cock tea. <laughs> we have we have uh, it's a very cock tea tea. You know, if you really wanted to get crazy about it, you could call this one skinny dip and and the, <laughs> you know I don't know, but uh, it's like people out playing in the river. <laughs> and that's the one I put a check on. So I really can't tell you much about it except that it is um, it is a rock tea from Wu I can tell you that it's a rock tea from Wuyi Mountain. 
and that and and very. Uh, I haven't found a bad one yet. So. Is, there, is there a is there a variety of, of, of cock teas, or is there just the one? Just the one that I know of. Oh, do you mean cock teas or cock teas? <laughs> I mean whatever it strikes your eyes. <laughs> you know. All right, cock teas. Shall we say cock teas? There we go. See, there's a. It looks like sort of, sort of looks like a rooster in a cornfield, something yeah. like that, doesn't it? You, you see how I'm still observing a lot of the rule of thirty-three, like that. <laughs> but I'm betting. I am it's betting that so that it's that, 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 that those are. Uh, we don't know if there's a variety of cock teas or not. Well, look, look. Show the other picture. And this see. One, so, okay. Show this show one, this. This one, the river rock. I'm betting that those are actually tea plants in the background, but I'm not sure of that. But I'm also betting that these red teas. Well, this one here's got a tea on the other side. Uh huh. There I'm you. Guessing. Okay. Now that's it right there. I believe that was one of the bushes of the of the red robe that was being grown from uh from from uh where they root them. You know what I mean? What from transplant? What do they call that? Where they cut off? They graft. I'll show the back of that. Yeah, grafts. Show the back. Look at that. I think that's a red. Some variety of a red that's tea. A, that's like a tree, man. Well, the, the the teas grow that well. There you go. It's they focused. Get that big? It gets like a tree. It looks like. Well, that's probably Wu Yi Mountain or some such thing, or Wu Yi Valley that we're looking at there. That there's a that valley over there. If it's the right one, I'm thinking of, is uh, just an incredible amount of uh, of uh, the the very uh, a variety I think this of. This is a pretty picture they put on there. I don't think it's anything. All right, that could be, but I think it is. Just like this one is is obviously. One that, that example of the, a, of the tea, a, a plant, tea plant, and I'm betting that this is also an example well, of a like great big bunch of them like growing down the mountain. In the fall. Okay, okay, well that's, that's what that's because you live up here in the mountains, and, you right. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks just like here in the fall. Mm -hmm. it's just it's just tea trees. Well, I gotta get headed on out. You were here very short. I know. I, I didn't let you talk. Just a spot of tea. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. Yes, Bacho. Yes, Bacho. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank. I just want. I, I was wanting to check in. We're going to go over the audio sometime in the next few days. Awesome. I just really with the say that word. with the oscilloscope. Reverb coming. Calm, calm down. For the bands. Yeah. I showed that fashion show. To the designer. Come on. Right. In. Hey, she how wasn't are you? happy with it. Right. Well, every time you're in, in, in the area, check that out. Yeah, okay. Just check it. The ego, I will. Right? Right. Just, yeah. Hey, you, can I get the you raw brought it to my attention, attention and I've just thought it very curious. Yeah. 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 yeah, thanks. Ouch. Oh, yeah, Have a seat. Could take Joe's spot. Or is he coming back? No, he's, he's not coming back. back. Either you could take his place or. You could sit over here by Jonathan and we He's never coming back. Yeah, he is. Sometime, but just not <laughs> just not today. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. You're working that mic very well. <laughs> more spooky voice. Mm -hmm. All right. This is more of a crunchy, crunchy mic, right? Have you tried one of yeah, these? Yeah, they're good. I like them. Actually, I'm trying to share and also be ready on my dinner break, so I don't want to fill up on the cookies. Mm -hmm. All right. It's cookie time. How about it? What's up? What's what's let's. Let's get a Casey Waters report here. Can you just slide in? This guy will be more on camera. We'll get you yeah, nice get in a little tighter there. Nice there I am. Cup for you. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. You're welcome. Let's see if I can pour you some tea without really spilling good. it like I did mine. I don't know what they taste like because I put two <laughs> things of sugar in each two. <laughs> oh, <sweet>. okay. <laughs> There's a sweet They're all good, tea. Yeah. Yeah. All, right. all right. Here it is, the Casey Waters report. So with the Casey Waters report, uh, um, my update is um, it is coming up for another show. I'm going to film in a couple of short days on Saturday afternoon is what I project. So that means I need to get organized. So we have a couple of directions the next show is going to go in. Okay, the quick update possible slight chance that Judson might um, do an interview with me and um, we might talk about his artistic techniques and uh, maybe other things and he might draw for us on camera. Right on. Is he the art partner you have with the show? Exactly. Um, Judson's my partner and he's been he does the artwork and the graphic artwork of the show and occasionally helps me come up with ideas for the show as well. 
Um, sometimes he does a little bit of the camera. I do most of the camera, like the background filming of footage, um, of scenery and stuff. And then I do most of the writing and most of the editing outside the graphic artwork itself, you know, mm -hmm. putting the show together. Um, as far as segments go, but anyway, so my alternative, which is my main plan for this show, is to do another book review, and this book is called I, um, I think it's Subjectivity and Reality, it's written by David Hawkins, PhD, um, and he's a psychiatrist from New York City, and he's a um, well noted, um, and his book is basically about spirituality and enlightenment, and a lot of it is drawn from his personal experience. Um, I'm just plowing through the preface so <laughs> far, and it's, you know, because I got the book last week actually, but busy me, I've been doing everything else, and procrastination sets in, and a little procrastination. But the preface, you know, I'm like highlighting all these passages and it almost seems continuous, I mean, as far as relevancy goes. Um, and what it is, for instance, I'll give you a little brief description from the preface. And he was talking about an incident when he was younger and growing up, I think it was in Wisconsin or somewhere up north, Minnesota, one of those northern states, mm -hmm. and he was had a paper route of 17 miles out wow. in the country. Okay, did and he run it by car? No, I think he ran it by bicycle. Okay, Dang. I, I ran my paper route by bicycle or by foot, but it was not 17 miles. I had two paper routes when I was young. So, oh, okay. So, so I the, relate to paper routes. You can, yeah, I never done it before, but I imagine 17 miles sounds pretty grueling. So I and know he, it does. And he was doing it on bicycle, um, and the problem was it was in the winter and a blizzard set in. Mm. And what, a, the like high winds, and heavy, <laughs> it, that's exactly what happened. No the, heavy, this week. <laughs> the heavy snow and the high winds kicked up and blew. He, he, I think he um, wrecked on the icy roads, mm. right? You know, he lost his traction, wrecked. Um, and then the papers blew everywhere across this giant field, and he was totally frustrated, totally cold. It was like... Uh, wind chill 20 below zero more. It was probably around zero or below zero already, the actual temperature. And so what he did um, is he found a high snowbank, I guess, where the snow really drifted up a bunch, you know, against a hill, maybe on the road or something. And just he said he punched through the icy crust and he just carved out this little snow cable, a snow hole, and he got in there and he got all snuggled up in there and he was all frustrated, but he said what happened is he got warm and relaxed and all that frustration melted away and everything melted away and he he became united with the one great being of God or whatever and he realized that everybody was united with this phenomenon and there really was no such thing as separate identity or time and right. space or any of that or these newspapers he was delivering or whatever it was so he was just hiding there in a blissful what? state and then finally his father came to rescue him, and he says that's how he was pulled out of it. Literally, he said he was. His father reached in and pulled him out, and then he woke up from this wonderful state. But anyway, that's a little clip which I'll probably have again on the show. But there's just one little part from this book, and it just goes on and on and on. It, it, it seems like there's a possibility maybe his brain was freezing. <laughs> mm -hmm. wow. Oh yeah, and um. Well, there's two, there's two, I'm glad you brought that up because this is a divergent story here and this is, has to deal with hypothermia safety, which Alaskans are pretty well versed in from stories about what it's like. Okay, what he d actually did was the wisest thing to do probably. Right. Yeah. Tunnel into the sun. And, and hide in there and remain still and he made, actually. He made a quick igloo, didn't he? He made a quick igloo, and a survivor that I met back in Anchorage at a bar, he claimed to have survived, I think, 
think it was six days or something like that doing that out on an island, you know, off of Prince William Sound because he got some like he got stranded in a boat or something weird like that happened in where it was just horrible and he barely made it, but that's how he did it. But the other thing why I said it diverges, okay, that's the safe thing to do, and you're all warm and you feel good. Well, because you actually are warm because the snow is, actually provides good insulation. But let's say you didn't do that and you were outside and it really was cold and you felt warm. Usually by then you would be, um, your mind would be failing and your judgment would be failing at the same time. So you might be confused, disoriented and feeling warm. And that's usually the worst conditions because that really means you actually have hypothermia right. and it's really kicking in. What typically happens then is people will get so warm they actually strip off their clothes mm. because they're so hot and then they die. Right. And then they'll be half naked or whatever. They dead think in the they're snow. warm, but they are not. But they're warm. not warm, and that's like the final stages of it. So you get like confusion and disorientation, and then finally this feeling of warmth when you're not really warm. Well, there's a weird there's a weird boundary that happens like between like extreme hot and extreme cold. I don't know if you've ever. Um, like like drawing a bath or a shower and the water's too oh. hot and you, you check it and it almost feels like it's so hot it almost feels cold yeah. at first. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if it's like the same kind of sensory Reverse. sensory like overload or, or it confusion, might be. you know what I mean? Like it's, cause it is, it's like so hot and it feels like cold at first and it's like, oh, it's not cold, it's hot. <laughs> and, well, and there's something else going on. That just happens is, to you, John. Okay. <laughs> no, well, no, what, what he's talking about is sometimes with me, the water actually is mixed and is hot and cold, literally mixed in the shower head because of the way the plumbing is and low water pressure and whatnot. But there's <laughs> another phenomenon I probably brought this up a couple of times on the show in the past, but gee, it's such an amazing story. <laughs> and this has to do with hypothermia, too. And this is, these guys, this is common. This is like a common Alaskan story almost. It's in Bethel, which is a town in southwest Alaska, you know, probably 10,000 or so people, I guess. And, um, what happened is it was on Christmas Eve and they were going to go to another nearby town. Or maybe they were outside of Bethel in a little town. They're going to another little town. But they got all these little towns scattered throughout there. Most of them, either you have to get to by an airplane and there'll be a little airstrip. A lot more long rivers. Um, there's a lot of rivers in that region of the state and you can have river access. Or you have to use like an ATV type vehicle and there'll be trails. It's a long way between little towns in Probably Alaska, like, isn't, it? isn't it? In that region, let's say maybe 20 miles, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. It depends, probably maybe maybe even 100 or 200 or maybe even 20 or less. It, you know, there's a great variation to it. But anyway, I don't think they were really going that far. If I remember right, it's probably only like 20 miles or, or something like that. Um, or maybe even 15 or less. But anyway, they were out in this blizzard in their snowmobile. And I guess they stopped off, you know, to take a break and drink or whatever. They were drinking. And that's probably the thing. A lot of these towns are dry, which means, uh, you know, you can't you drink at all. Between them, right? Yeah. So, and, you know, no, the, <laughs> they're not going to catch you in the middle of nowhere. Well, that's the problem. You're in the and middle. And you just keep right on going. Women. <laughs> and, they're, you know, and you just keep going. But anyway, they, they were got drunk. And the blizzard got to them, and they basically died of hypothermia. But the the tale of their death is very amazing. After this point, first of all, oops, who is it? Hey. Who, who you me? Me? Is there a Final Cut Pro manual somewhere? Yes. Anyway. How do you make this? Or do you know how to make this? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, that's, yeah. that's fine. I have four pots of, of each, a different. Very good to eat, you know, extraordinary tea in every pot. Yummy. Well, yeah, come <laughs> back. And, and we have these cookies that are really good. Oh, okay, so what cookies. happened? This is the story of their hypothermia. Yeah, so this, but first of all, they found their snow machines, didn't find their bodies. And then, like, over a period of a few days or weeks thereafter, um, there was these weird stories that they saw them, um... It, you know, or um, 
out there, you know, I think there were there were two people, two or three people, and they might have saw them one at a time. But in um, like weird situations, like maybe running very fast, or uh, maybe lifting like this huge heavy piece of snow that there's no way they, they could they lift. Ate someone became Wendigos, didn't they? It's huh? like they became a ghost form, <laughs> is what the the native legends explain it at, and that's what they were they were seeing. They said in a sense. And it was just was in the paper, is where I read it from the Anchorage Daily News. They said that according to the legend that people could like when under these weird conditions of hyperthermia, uh, it, there's a chance that you could almost split up. And what happens is you have one into your various spirit selves, but one of your spirit selves is apparently like super light and almost ghost like, but incredibly strong. And could do all these fantastic feats or whatever, um, and that's one of them that they were seeing. But there, there's like several. There's like two or three parts, or three or four parts, to you when you die. And one of them might be the material body, and then there might be like three spirits or whatever, or something wow. like that. And I, I just find and the, that fascinating. And this fascinating. story was corroborated by multiple witnesses. Yeah, it was. I think at least two witnesses involved, if I remember. Oh. Right, and that's why they, th not that he, I think not who maybe saw the person at the same time. It might have been two people who saw different, different people or the same person at different times. So coming I'm a back little with, hazy. Coming with, back with strange with tales. With these really <laughs> strange tales, but it wasn't just one person. It was at least two people who saw these um, these people who were lost on separate incidences, mm -hmm. and so it's just a weird story. Well. Um, I just wanted to make an announcement. That tonight, oh. uh, Rat Jackson is on Mount Dungeon. Really? And oh. Ben called me and told me that they were giving the Asheville Brewing Company another chance. Really? Trying to get it up on the big screen outside, so. I don't, well, whatever. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just letting y'all know. And I just like to, um, and y'all out there. And now, see, this may be a very interesting episode, because I was with Megan when she was looking at and deciding how to put the book behind there, mm -hmm. she does not approve of all of your songs. Doesn't approve of does them. Does not approve of them. Oh, some right. of them are, according to her, somewhat misogynistic. They're, no, they're definitely misogynistic. Prepare for bodybuilders. What? Bodybuilders. Bodybuilders? Yes. Oh, we, I've already seen the episode. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, it looked good. I mean, I, <laughs> I was really happy with the backgrounds she put in there. Okay, they're, so we're, she always does a good job. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, okay. they're, they're very like... But did she make fun of them? Is that what she did? did she, she was intending to, I don't know. No, I mean, she, uh, she put... Uh, she, she, most of them were pretty appropriate. Y'all can, y can ha song. handle somebody making fun of you, though, can't you? Y'all <laughs> well, that's... go along with just about we, anything, don't we you? We make fun of ourselves. That's yeah. the idea. Yeah. So that's good. That's good. Yeah. Four guys like us singing I, about the stuff we'd sing about. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed, the, I noticed John, that when you tasted that tea, you you looked at it somewhat suspiciously, and I know you poured uh, one of the you poured the jasmine tea. Yes. In there, have you? Is it the first time you've had jasmine? Uh, well, I know I think it's the first time I had jasmine. It's just that I am a utter. Uh, sugar file, and uh -huh. I didn't put sugar in the first time, so I was. I always out. recommend one lump of sugar in a full cup of jasmine it really brings it to life uh yeah so you might want to put more in there yeah but that's what that that's what i think is is, is perfect i think a lump of sugar really bring, brings the, the flower taste to life on the and, subject uh, of tea mm -hmm. i would just like to mention that this is a great tea party thank you but when it's not thursday and friday there is another great tea party to be had i see at vintage moon Oh. A vintage Moon. Vintage Moon. It's what, a, tell us what that it's is. It's a um, vintage clothing store boutique. Uh, what's that street behind Patton where Hooker Joe's used to be? Cox? Is that Cox? No, I no. think that's Commerce on... Street. Commerce Street, yes. It's on Car Commerce Street. Oh, oh is it where the... Is it where the... Silver, s s s um, Cereal restaurant? Yes, used to be? yes. Right by where, where the cereal restaurant used to be. 80s. Is it in the same place where Kahuka Joe's used to be? No, it's, no, that's it's on the other side. Right. The other side? Yes. Um, it's like okay. two, two doors down. Two uh, doors down. Vintage uh, Moon, uh, she has her own creation there as well. And she um, serves tea with these. Who is she? Do you uh, know she her? is Gigi. She's Gigi. the proprietress of uh -huh. Vintage Moon. And she serves uh, tea there, and she will uh, do a high tea. 
um, if you um, arrange it 24 hours in advance. How high? <laughs> Pretty darn high from what I saw the uh, the chairs there. I see. Well, there are chairs that cannot be have been made by sober people, but um, it's very good tea and the um, snacks. Well, actually, the desserts are delicious. Mm -hmm. So if it's not Thursday or Friday, I recommend going down to Vintage Moon to have a lovely spot of tea. Wow! Wow! I'll have to go in and speak with her. I will. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe could we get you to take uh, Jonathan's spot? John, could we? Oh, yes. See, because oh. you're off camera. And yeah, no that's can, right. No yeah, way I, I like being a disembodied voice, but okay. Apparently, yeah. the way I've set the cameras, but if you take this seat over here, okay. you'll be on camera for sure. And then and slide that one up there, and that can still be Jonathan's if he comes back, and he'll still be on. I'm just trying to figure out how to get everybody on camera. Yeah. And I'm having a hard time doing it. That chair just isn't didn't wind up on any camera. I had the same problem with doing an episode. Yeah. I've got an entire third of episode with a disembodied voice talking to me. Right, <laughs> which you have been throughout this episode so far. Oh, yes, that was... But it was actually better doing it that way because I could make fun of that, like intercut mm -hmm. um, pictures of him when he's supposed to be talking. Uh -huh. like, he's supposed to be on camera, but I didn't get him on camera. Uh -huh. stuff like that. Every now and then, though, you can look right at that camera and, and say something most <laughs> profound. If you have you have profundity, look, just look straight in there and, and <laughs> give it... There's this <laughs> urge to say something utterly absurd as profound. Um, I have this idea at some point in the future organizing... Regular, like, steampunk socials uh -huh. there. Having people come in, period costumes and stuff like that, drinking tea. I think, okay, again, again, in the steampunk arena, mm -hmm. I would want to encourage you to encourage show and tell. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, at at a, 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 you might call it a steam, steampunk conference mm -hmm. or a... Well, I'm a sucker for alliteration, so I think mm -hmm. I'd go with social. Social. A, steam, a steampunk social, though, I think should, you, 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 could, you, you could gather it around some form of technology or art. Mm -hmm. You see what oh, I mean? Definitely. definitely. That where, where someone, someone has put some effort into a creation of mm -hmm. theirs, which would, which would hopefully be steam-powered. Which would be interesting since the most logical art to first go with, considering where it would be held, would be fashion. Oh. And I do think some steam-powered uh, waistcoats would be very interesting. <laughs> Perhaps <laughs> where they could where they huh. could they could just uh, put out a little little steam. Yeah. Now and then. <laughs> 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 Who knows? That's or, right. Or maybe a steam-powered. Um, belt that you could put <laughs> on and it would just self tighten and yeah. you just hit I, the switch or whatever. I see all, steam and the con. And I, I see all sorts of amusing yet nightmare scenarios developing because of yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. You're oh, right. Look, John just split in half because the belt tightened. <laughs> yeah, <fast. laughs> the it, steam power anaconda belt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It didn't stop. It kept on shrinking. Oh no. I watched most of those. I didn't burn them, but. Did you want to burn them? I, I mean, I watched most of them. Okay, and then that's enough for you? Is that what you're... Yeah, <laughs> okay, you got the... SCTV? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah. hopefully these have the intro on them, that zany intro I was talking about. That's a very zany um, intro. Which is so well suited to you. Okay. <laughs> um, it really is. I, I'm, I'm assuming you're going to tell me when it's done, oh, yeah, I remember when that happened to me, you know, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um... I was going to say, oh, yes, there is one steam-powered piece of fashion which is the perfect natural fit. Boots. Steam-powered steam boots. There's, there's a product out of Russia which is basically a gas-powered super-jumping boot. Okay. They've got these, like, heels underneath heels, mm -hmm. and so you go poof, 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 like that. So every step takes you, like, 12 feet. Wow. Yes. So you could you could definitely try something like that with steam, I think. Mm. That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. There would... Your feet would explode. That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. You would have to have a very small steam very, generator. Very, very small. small. Very compact. Mm -hmm. It might be possible. Um, and one of the things I was thinking also along steam technology, which also might have involved it, um... Or something similar to it, at least. Um, 
was Tesla's device to um, bring down buildings. Um, he, if I remember right, it was relatively simple in design. Um, I, of course, I don't know what the design is. It was some sort of vibration device? Exactly. It was, it was the size of a brick, he said, if mm. I remember right. And you literally attach it to a building, and it was a vibration device, and it would, like, tune into, like, the building's natural frequency to do the most damage right. and would create resonance waves and literally bring it down. It might like take 20 minutes or something, I guess. But it's basically a demolition device. Which is very cool. Which is actually mm -hmm. kind of cool and, and there might be a, other applications from that technology or whatever. And it's just... It's just kind of weird that it, that technology is not used. It almost seems like it would be a lot safer than, say, standard explosives. Well, you know, because you know, you, they might have less chance of fragments, uh, fragments shooting out far away from the building. Let's say, or and also, um, it might even be able to used in um, road work or whatever. Who knows what it would do with the earth? Oh God. <laughs> well, there's, there's probably a very there's probably a very environmental aspect to it too. I mean, I can't imagine getting all these explosives, putting them in one spot and exploding them is very good for the environment. That's what I'm thinking. If it could, it probably could be tailored slash modified. Maybe that it might be able to be used for certain situations. Um, you know, for let's say blowing up a rock face or something, or, or chipping away at a rock face. Maybe that's a big F. Be little grenades, those things. Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't. Um, well, but, I think the I think the I think secret it, to the whole thing, Tesla was very much into resonance, and I and, think that's and why he I, was one of the he was one of the I would say a pioneer of resonance. Exactly. He truly was. And I think the concept here was if it was to be used at for an entire building that you would uh, either need to calculate or measure in some form, uh, figure the uh, uh, overall resonance of the structure. Maybe you would. Right. You would and, have and, to and, and, ev and every in. mass would have one. You know that's, what I mean? That's right. And um, then and then you create a, create a device that that injects uh, something at that frequency of that resonance. Uh, that continuously adds a little bit more, a little bit of energy, and a little bit of energy at the resonant frequency until, and 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 it, see it always it it, it always gains. That's and, right. Until, and just by adding a little bit, a little bit, a little bit by by using a very low power device that just it's gets a little bit more, and that and in and, and and the resonance it, it's like it's like pushing a swing and it gets higher and higher That's and higher right. until the thing snaps. I often almost um, think that it would be so much better if Tesla had been born in this day and age, with all the access to modern technology. Oh, yeah. This, this, day, I, this day and age would if, not be this well, day and age without Tesla in his day and but age. But the thing is, if he Actually, was born, right. if he was born in this day and age, mm -hmm. Tesla would not do anything. Think about it. Tesla was a humongous nerd, probably with Asperger's syndrome. He would probably become the world's greatest World of Warcraft player if he was alive today. What? World of Warcraft? World of Warcraft. Oh, That's what well, you think. Yes, right. Okay. Well, you never know. You never well, I'm know. I'm thinking that we, this is a much more distracting age. Than what yeah, we that's the thing. It's much more distracting. You got a point there, and and employ, have him in a modern environment. It's really hard to say exactly. Yes, but what this, this would age happen. would not be this age. This is true. Without without, without the him. influence of Tesla in his true. age. That's um, right. You know, the, basically the power grid that we live under. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's well, right. You know, Generators. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the the efficiency of the power coming to your office and to your home will, uh, is due to Tesla's insight. I agree. Know? I agree. And uh, and so, your technology would be way behind. But of course, oh, we man. don't use this more advanced technology <laughs> of broadcasting a lot electricity of, that was set up on Long Island or whatever. A lot of the of, oh. of his of of his more advanced technologies are still classified. Mm. Oh yeah, it's still yeah. classified. So, yeah, um, now, what it was the GE, the FBI, or something went through his apartment. Oh uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, they apparently got everything. <laughs> I mean, they they apparently even scraped the wallpaper <laughs> looking for stuff seriously hidden behind. I mean, they went literally through everything they could find <laughs> and just got what do you whatever. Think this is about here. Are these are these people high? 
Which people? <laughs> oh, the people in the back? Yeah. In the background, uh, yeah. Well, I imagine the tape has been slowed down so it much. It is slowed down. That's what I was thinking. It's, of. A, it's running at half speed. It is. Oh, that's it. This is not to count them being high. They could still very well be high. <laughs> it's half speed, so that it makes it a little more tricky. Um, uh, well, the man's dancing in a cowboy hat and spinning an umbrella. That is not sober activity. Not usually. <laughs> yeah, I tend to agree. <laughs> right. All right. I am going... My head is going to explode at the end of the day today. I really? Just, I've been drinking way too much caffeine. Can I watch? Oh. <laughs> and i got to drink more caffeine, because i got to meet people at caffeine after this. Really? Yes. Who, 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 well, hopefully who? we're meeting models. I see. <laughs> oh, Hopefully okay. we're arranging... Uh, a future episode of Pleasure Saucer. Uh -huh. Cool. Hopefully. Many things to hope for. All right. All right. That would be nice. All right. We are planning to do a um, music video for Ben's soul band, which I think is going to be pretty cool. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, um, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make are, they, are they going to do, I'm a soul man? No, no, no. Do, 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 it's do. some standard, she broke my heart and done me wrong song. Okay. So I think the premise is going to be that all the band is at a bar. Yeah. Drowning their sorrows, and Ben's the bartender. Yeah. So they're all going, and Ben's singing, Oh, she done me wrong, as he cleans uh, glasses and stuff like that. Uh, I think it'd be pretty fun. What bar? I don't know yet. We're thinking maybe the new French uh, new French bar. I see. It has the right uh, dimensions. Okay. That'd be interesting. Okay. I'll t I can re make some recommendations. I don't know what it's called now. What used to be Gadsby's has a nice bar. That's on Lexington, isn't it? It's oh, just off Lexington, around the corner. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. okay. And and, uh, and I can't tell you, I've not known its name really since it was used to be Gadsby's. Okay. But the bar in there is nice. It's mm -hmm. a lot of woodwork and that stuff means, looks nice. That may be the, is it like going up towards uh, Pack Place and all that? It, no, it's, it's on Walnut Street. Um, hold it. If, yeah, if you, if you go up Lexington Walnut. and then you turn so that you can go over towards to Broadway. the Mellow Mushroom. Like if you were going to the Mellow Oh, that way. Uh -huh. it would, oh, okay. It would be yeah. on your left, on your way to the Mellow Oh, Okay, yes. I believe that was. And there's a nice... There's a nice uh, probably can't use that one. Um, we could probably, when it was a lesbian bar... I mean, probably some nice light coming in from the window and everything for the lighting. It would not become a frat bar, but I'll, I'll check that one out. Okay. And the, well, there's, there are several nice bars. Yes, there are several nice bars. We, we are awash with nice bars in Nashville. But that, well, that yeah. seems to be, that was, that's what comes to my mind for ornate, you know, okay. nice bar for a, bar, for a right. bartender to be behind, you know. Mm. I think, you know, so. You know what URTV needs? A, a bar? Well, well, well yes. <laughs> a bar. And many other a, tro things. a troll bar. URTV should install a troll bar. A troll, oh, a troll bar. It just hit yeah. me. What? A bar at your TV is not necessarily such a far-fetched idea. <laughs> For instance... Leave it to Casey Waters. <laughs> way back when, in my college days, right, um, at Withers Hall, which had the uh, um, Department of Marine, Earth, and Atmospheric Sciences, they were all lumped together as one. Mm -hmm. They had, I think it was only once a month, but still, beer in the basement. They would actually bring in like a keg and a trash can and set it up in the basement. And it was like 3.30 in the afternoon. And I think it was the Graduate Student Association put it on. And so it was basically graduate students, you know. Um, but they were only like two or three years older than me. And right. so... And I would just kind of drift in. <laughs> and, and drink their and, beer. <laughs> and drink their beer. You know, maybe you might have to pay. Figure. Maybe I had to pay like $3 to get in. I forgot. But you could drink or, beer but, all but, afternoon but for 3 bucks. That's not Exactly. Bad. And you would just <laughs> yeah. hang out. And people, the thing is, people would be in the laboratory next door doing their lab class. Right. While you're drinking beer in the hallway. So I'm like... Well, gee, if such a scenario could exist there, <laughs> could it exist here? Well, you know, you, we may uh, we may have come up with a good idea of what to do with the uh, uh, spare <laughs> editing suite. <laughs> yeah, you know, we we just yeah, but you I'm might want to go to the uh, terms of to, fundraising activity. You might want to bring that up at yeah. the board meeting. You know, you might want to get on the agenda there. We'll have to the label it like the inspiration room or something. Yeah, like that. because <laughs> and then then it would be a good idea because you take all the. 
income and then use it for fundraising mm -hmm. for your TV and thus it would make sense but um, anyway well well, I think a lot what, of well, wait a minute. was it you telling about the, the, the tea at the uh, what say the name of the place there were Vintage the, Moon Huh? Vintage Moon. Vintage Moon, and it's a clothing store. It's a, it's a, um, well, it's a vintage clothing boutique. Now she also mm -hmm. sells, she also sells original creations there, but okay. the majority of it is vintage clothing. Okay. Oh, okay. It's, it's, okay. Very ornate place. Very okay. okay. Uh, and she serves tea. And she serves tea. Yes. And does she charge to serve tea? I believe there is a small charge for serving tea. I'm not. Okay. Um, I get free tea because I was filming an episode with her. So. I see. Oh, okay. But yeah, and for a nominal fee, sure. Yeah, yes. Um, but one thing that your TV needs is tracks. Tracks. Yeah, so you can do tracking shots. So you can like put the oh. tripod on and you can like, move it. So do you want to build it? You want to build tracks? I'd love to build it if I knew how to build. Okay. <laughs> I do. Oh, oh. If you knew how to build. I I'm not saying I'm completely useless with a hammer, but uh -huh. I'm not the greatest man with a hammer. There's not a whole lot of hammering in okay. build, the building of tracks, but there's quite a bit of screwing. Then I'm your man. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Come on, how can you resist a line like that? I knew you would. I knew you would. <laughs> I, knew you would you, I knew you were going to go for that one. All right. Um, but so uh, how would you do that? Just get like two. Okay. Um, the the e the nicest set I saw is, and I, and by nicest I mean these are homemade right okay and you can make them mm -hmm. and they worked well and 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 they're easy okay uh, at the garden shop you get you get what are basically fence posts okay which are round pipes mm -hmm. okay and and then then the, the end of one of them is like shrunk up a little bit so they stick in so you can you can stick these things together right you see what i mean they're and just they closed. Them. and yes and they're, they're just round pipes and they stick together that's okay. all they are so then you so you 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 get a uh, you get as many of those as you need for your run mm -hmm. Th these become your track okay okay and they, and i think they already have pre-drilled holes in them where you where you can Put things. So basically, what you do is you decide what your width of the track you want right. to be, and you and you uh, cut boards to mm -hmm. that width, and then you put screws into your pipes. Right. You see what I mean? And 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 so you make uh, the equivalent of like a railroad track has ties. Right. You make your ties just out of a piece of board with a couple of screws in going up into each pipe. So a couple of boards and a couple of uh, screws mm -hmm. into each of the uh, pipes makes what looks like a, a ladder with a couple of steps on it. Right. That's all. And two pipes. And then and so you make as many lengths of those as you need for the run that you need. And like two lengths of that's a pretty good run. Uh, three or four lengths is really a good run mm -hmm. of that stuff because I don't know if these are, are four. Um, if if they're if they're four, I think they're like four feet long. I'm right. guessing it's four, maybe even five feet long. Yeah, but if well, the longer it, the better. If they're, in if they're four feet long, two of them's an eight foot run. Right. You know, and it doesn't take many till you've got a pretty long run, and and they slip right together. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you need to build the 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 dolly right. that that rides on these, and this is this is the point. The point of these is that they are very smooth. These are round pipes. And they're and they're very smooth. So to put to build the dolly that the wheels go on, you uh, you use um, uh, a big piece of uh, plywood, right? A big heavy solid piece of plywood. You can reinforce it with with uh, two by fours or something if you wanted to. But a good solid piece of plywood. It doesn't have to be real big because the camera and stuff is not just big enough to fit the tripod on, basically. Really, or whatever kind of camera stand you want to uh, attach right. to it. You know. Okay, then um, you uh, on on the bottom of that you take a piece of angle iron and you just chop the angle iron up into little short pieces. Okay, okay. so so you've got a, a, a piece. You know, they're they're ninety degrees like that, and you and you attach that to the bottom of the of the board this way. So you've got an angle iron attached this way, and you drill a hole in each one sticking out that way, and you put a bolt through those through okay. those sticking out sticking out that way. So now you've got two bolts coming out this way, and on them you put skateboard wheels. Right. And the skateboard wheels are now pointed in this way and they roll along oh. the top of 
of oh, okay. the pipes. Right. See what I mean? Yeah. And the thing is very smooth, and you just put a rope on one end of it, or what, or what, whatever kind of handle, a push or a pull that you want on it. Maybe a maybe a little push on one end, a little pull for the other end, other end. Right. You know, and and a mount, and you lay your tracks. Okay. And you've got dolly, huh. but now that's not bad. And look at the price of that. You you're going to be getting uh, eight skateboard wheels, mm -hmm. um, one one length of of uh, angle iron. Now, maybe seventy five dollars for the entire thing, if that. If that. Yeah, that's if that's that. probably about right. Might come I, in for under fifty. Yeah. Maybe even for under fifty you know, what you want to right. get good materials. You kinda want depends good, on how long the your run the run. You that. know, if you're wanting to make a forty foot run or something, well, you yeah. know, but but the the biggest expense is probably gonna be the uh the the length of track. If you're going for a long length of track, and that's okay, but that's still going to be dirt cheap. Yeah, it's still yeah, maybe it would be seventy five dollars for a really long length or I something like it. that. I know so many things I could use that for. Do you see? Oh yeah, and I'll be glad to help you. I appreciate with that. that. But things yeah. will, huh. but things will be needed: drills and yeah. bolts and. I need things. tools. I'm mm -hmm. a man. I need tools of some sort. Well, now who do who do we know who who is among us who's who's right handy as a carpenter uh. and. And metal worker and such like that that could help us with this because I can I can I can show them the design I just really don't I'm I'm not a great carpenter nor am I really inclined to to want to get real active and, and build this thing right now I don't know that many handy people <laughs> but but I've observed one on it they used one that uh, that was built that way on a video shoot that I did the audio on okay. some time back which is uh, you know was a, a you know a really classy shoot. And and I was surprised that the videographers that came that was that was their uh, that was the rig they built. And it was because it was very light, very portable. These these pipes are are very thin. They're very light, mm -hmm. and and it's all very portable. Right. They don't need to support any weight really. Just mm -hmm. and if you want and if you want to pull it apart, yeah, it could easily support the weight if someone wanted to ride on. You know, it, right. the, I think the dolly was large enough that someone could ride on right. it and hold the camera if they wanted to be making some moves, or they could walk beside it and make moves or right. whatever. You know, but they would probably be smoother riding on it. But I don't think it's necessarily intended for that. Yeah, man, I'm thinking maybe walking alongside of the camera. Yeah. Or or using ropes, but yeah, if you want, mm -hmm. if someone has to be with the camera, maybe walking along it. And just but there's other things you can do. You can become, you can get more and more complex, and you can have a wheel that rolls on the, uh, on the on the track mm -hmm. that that is a drive wheel that it, that it doesn't drive the thing, but it pull it, it it drives off the track, and you can have a wheel that drives off the track and runs some form of a pulley. Or something like that, and you can have little little strings and things that run up and do things like like as the thing progresses down the track, it it moves the camera on the oh, on its track, you know, or th wow. and different things like oh, that. Oh, That'd be interesting. You, you can you can even gear that stuff oh. down. So you can gear that stuff down so that it even it even adjusts the focus as it comes closer. That it, would be you know very it, complicated too. It, wow. That becomes very com that all becomes very complicated, but it's all within the grasps of of possibility, uh, you know. Oh, uh, speaking of movie news, did you hear that Tom Savini is going to be speaking at UNCA? No. Well, it's very cool. To, uh, Tom uh, Savini is going to be speaking at UNCA, I think the 12th. Okay, well, tell us who is Tom Savini. Tom Savini is the guy who has done the makeup for nearly every great horror movie in the last, I would say, twenty years. And here I was, oh, uh, and, and here okay. I was going to guess he had something to do with science fiction. Well. Oh, it's, it's obviously a lot of more science fiction movies, yes. But um, he's also an actor in his own right. He was in Planet Terror. Did you see that one? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, he was also in... Oh, my phone is ringing. Perhaps someone out in our audience has seen Planet Terror. <laughs> but Tom Savini, very cool guy. He's going to be doing like a talk workshop. Do you think on... people call me that are watching the show? No, no. this person has satellite TV. Ah. <laughs> oh, well. Hello, since you have satellite TV, I'm sure you're not watching us at the moment, are you? <laughs> Okay. More great. So. I picked up a very interesting magazine last night. It's called CHAP. CHAP. Yes. Oh. It's for the CHAP movement. 
I'll, I'm going to let you explain it over the phone. Wait, for okay? all the over bikers? The, so I'm going to hold no, no, the like, phone up to the microphone. He's a jolly old chap. Just when you hear me say, you can tell them now. The, they will hear whatever Passion it is business. you say. Okay. What are we doing? Martha has an announcement, <laughs> okay. which she wants me to make, but I prefer I that she make it. Okay, okay. go for it, Martha. The, the war is over. It's over. What's that? The war is over. And how is it that you've determined this? Well, Justin Collin told me, and I think he's right. He said he knows it. It's uh -huh. over. Okay. And, and, how is it that, and how we is it that he? And how is it that again. he knows this? He just knew it. He just knew it, uh-huh. It's raining in Charlotte. Okay, and it's raining in Charlotte, and, and we, we begin and again. we can believe it. We can believe it. Mm -hmm. The war is over. What is she talking that's, about? Me, huh? That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Later. Bye. Peace. Okay. You know, she said the war is over. What was she referring to? Iraq or what? No. Uh, yeah, that's what she said. It's a miracle. <laughs> Huh. Well, uh, if if I may interpret, I will I will assume the interpretation to be similar to John Lennon and Yoko Ono's uh, uh, "War is over if you want it," or or something or something like you know "peace if you want it" concept, or it, that if we all just think the war is it's over, over. Maybe it, it is, will be it over. Is over <laughs> and and uh, and all of that and and that and that is good, but that's why I did not want to. Uh, make this announcement <laughs> because uh, I did not comprehend the announcement. So there it is. It has been it has been given. I have I have interpreted it as best I can, but uh, as not wanting to, um, I was unprepared for that <laughs> announcement of that mag for an announcement of that magnitude. Oh, yeah. I actually, would want to have a better understanding of it than Justin called and said. I so think, I think we could use some more war. Okay. If only because this peace is killing everybody. Is it? Well, think about it. How many people died in the war versus how many people have died since mission accomplished? Uh -huh. Really, I think the war would save more people. Oh, than well, the peace actually, would. if you look at it technically, I mean, when they declared mission accomplished like a month after the invasion, you know, less troops died. Less troops died in that first month, albeit I'm sure it was very intense. We didn't, we didn't lose since, any troops. since then. No, oh, we, we didn't, didn't lose any troops until they said mission accomplished. <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, war, you're right. Mission accomplished, that's when we started losing our casualties. That's right. There might have been like six or less. It was, you, yeah, you're right. It was a very small number. No, I we had it. six captives. One was a female, but we had no loss of life. Oh, they were captives. The that's was what done. it was. It was yeah. They were captives, but no loss mm -hmm. of life. I got confused with that. Here, would you okay. like a cookie? Oh, thank you. It wasn't yeah. until it was after mission mm -hmm. accomplished. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Also, an interesting thing. It's a real good cookie. Oh, Tell us how good the cookie is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not bad. Not a good cookie? Mm hmm. Yeah, so um, mm -hmm. ginger lemon cream. Very good. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is we've lost 4,000 soldiers by combat and 6,000 soldiers by suicide. Oh. Is that right? Oh. So we have over 6,000 suicides. Now, is that true? Yeah. Where did you get this? These, uh, we've, we've lost only 4,000 soldiers by combat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's true. Yeah, that's and we have standard. lost 6,000 soldiers by suicide, yeah. you say? According to and what I was watching on Montel and a couple other shows. I believe According it. to what? Yeah. Since I, I don't know what Montel is. Montel, Montel Williams. Williams. Talk yeah. A daytime but talk yeah. show. That would not include um, only soldiers in active combat. It would include soldiers who went back home, I imagine. No, yeah, we're including... Oh, this of is, course. This is, re this is returning veterans. Right. Right. From Iraq, over six thousand have committed suicide. Uh, yeah, okay, I now is it, it. okay. This is returning veterans from, from Iraq. Iraq. So these weren't suicides in Iraq; they were suicides on our own. Or maybe property. combination. Let's just say it's a combination of both suicides in Iraq, soldiers on duty, mm. and after they return. That, but that still. number that number is probably still low. How many homicides? Involving veterans were actually suicides. At that time, they said something. Uh, now, as far as actual murders committed oh. by veterans that have come back, they figured over 125. But no, not just committed by veterans, but committed on veterans. Because 125. Veterans, there might yeah, have been murders, requests where murders. we or stuff like that, where um, someone says, "Yeah, I want to die, make it look like I was attacked." No, no. Or, or what no, you I, mean, I mean, like suicide by cop. Oh, suicide by cop. Okay, yeah, there's probably been a few of those too. Yeah, yeah I see what you're saying. 
Sure. I mean, it's really horrible. And the thing is, when you look, break it down, they're subjected to multiple tours and so on and so on. It's no wonder this type of stuff's going it's, on. It's time to bring this to a stop right yeah. now. Yeah. And there's nothing that's going to get their attention and 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 get some kind of action as as the, uh, the bill that's crossing their desks that has impeachment written at the top of it. Now, now that's just that's that's actually going too easy on them, as you know. I recommend decapitation. I recommend uh, that they that they march through the streets of Baghdad with uh, the heads of the le of the leaders from the very top right on down through to everyone who voted in favor of the war uh, uh, should have their own stick uh, upon which their heads should, right. should be placed and should be marched through the the streets of Baghdad. And then and only then would anything that we could possibly say to the Iraqi people be received. In any manner, uh, you know that, uh, and and then I doubt it. I highly, highly doubt it. But that would be. But it needs to be, be more the, specific than that. We have to remember. What you want? We, are, you want to name them off? No, 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 Don't no, no, forget, no, no, we're no, going to no. hang Donald We're not Rumsfeld quite got from the, the right sour targets. Apple tree. There's hidden targets, unfortunately. What I mean oh. by hidden targets is. When you look at who's responsible for, you could say was well, Bush. Obviously, Bush and Cheney are at the top of the list, and Rumsfeld. Now, when you look well, at right on up there, and maybe some members of Congress, a lot of me members of Congress voted for the war. Mm -hmm. They were probably against it initially, but they were quote pressured into it for whatever reason. For they got them. They won themselves a place yeah. on 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 my it, train. If but I the had thing my own. is, who's they won themselves that, a place whose idea parade. was it? In the military industrial complex, private figures, people we probably haven't even heard whose names they are. Actually, they're we have. Not, we have. Not, or maybe we know, but certain people. I believe in giving them honorary. There's, way there's in a advance. list. There is a list. If I had my. We believe in giving them honorary positions in the parade. Yeah, as well. as, and they need to be honorary. If, 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 I, if, I had, if I had my own Flying Monkey Assassin Squad. I know oh, right. Flying Monkey Assassin Squad. I know exactly. Yay, let's hear who, it for Flying Monkey I know exactly who I sent it to. You would. Let's every, hear. Every single person who signed up for the Project for New American Century. Yay. Flying Monkey Assassins. And mm -hmm. what is that you just mentioned? Though? The Project for the New, New American, American Century? Century. Oh, oh, I heard of that oh, one, yeah. oh, yep. This is this is very public. Um, How about much? the Bilderbergs? Do they get to go too? I well, maybe so. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, That's yeah, more yeah, in yeah, general yeah. principles right. or anything else. You know, what, a project, <laughs> what is this project? The Project for New American Century. I'll look it up. It's a very public thing. It's these um, basically these bunch of guys. A lot of them neoconservatives. As and I don't just mean neocon as in they. They don't think the way we do. I mean, actual <laughs> advocates of neoconservatives in the um, style of Mr. Strauss. Mm -hmm. They signed this. They're plan. Nazis. Go ahead. <laughs> well, Nazis have more style. Mm -hmm. um, they signed uh, <coughs> this document stating what needed to happen to make America great again. How to get us out of the dangerous doldrums of not having the Soviet Union to fight anymore? What needed to happen to maintain our superiority over the planet? Yeah, th you're right. And those what, people. <laughs> those people. Well, it's not secret. It's out there. It, they signed it. They, they have their names to it. It's not being denied by them. And one of the things um, that mentioned was war in the Middle East. So yeah, there was a plan. It was published, publicized, and published before the war, and. It, Pretty much goes along with this. Of course, they're incompetent, so it didn't go quite that they wanted it to. But there is a plan out there. All right, and, and you have the name. They have a list of names. They got the list of a whole bunch have, of names. Cheney's on there. You're taking names here. Yeah, Cheney's. Yeah, that's what I thought. Cheney's part of it. Probably a lot of people in Halliburton, but all these people really need to be held accountable by the public. Um, oh. in a sense, if they were totally boycotted, if everybody. Wanted to have nothing to do with them if all businesses refused to have transactions with them, and so on and so on, until they basically felt isolated from um, everybody, yeah. Did you and have everybody yeah. shouted in their That's face okay. how horrible <laughs> their ideas were, and how it's all too. motivated by their greeds. and how they're exploiting the poor to well, make this money, is good. basically. The problem, like blue mm -hmm. the problem with that... 
And the problem with what you said is that it assumes that we can make this all right again. That if we find the right people and get them to publicly confess and... Yeah, that's the assumption, you're right. That, yeah. that, that some mythical justice will prevail and the world will be right again. Or that if we parade their heads through Iraq, which, hey, I'm for. Okay. All right, should we take a vote on it? So you 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 are in favor of the the, the head on the stick parade. I'm in favor of that. All right, all right, you're head of the stick. Three three out of okay. That's four out of four. four the motion four carries. Years. Head but. on the stick. And, and okay, wait a minute. Look, I have a, I have an official I have an official duty to perform at this part in the in 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 the official capacity of the Tea Party and in the spirit of the Boston Tea Party and and great Tea Parties in history like that, <laughs> I have to announce that it has the motion has. Has carried and uh, and we will be uh, we be, it, it is official the Tea Party has spoken the head on a stick parade through the streets of, of Baghdad uh, has been has been called for Operation Snickersnack oh, is yes. now in effect Snickersnack because <laughs> okay. we definitely have to do something for the American image because when you think about but it no. if we're not at war with them. We're paying them to be our friends. No, One or the other. We're either paying them to be our friends or we're at war or embargoing. You have to let him talk before he and explodes. It, He's had too much caffeine. Well, it's a dangerously naive um, position huh? that we can repair our image. Yes. The Iraqis will not like us for at least 60 years. We could 60 get, years? How about 60, How about 600 generations? Well, we've well, got to do TV, the best TV we can. TV is a great um, amnesiac, yes. but... Um, for at least 60 years, we could give them all gold-plated limousines. We could give them the highest standard of living in the known universe. Right, and they would spit upon us. And they'd be right to. Mm -hmm. We can't solve that problem. Right. They don't like us. They should not like us. We should not worry too much about them liking us. We should worry about the constant loss of life. Mm -hmm. True. Well, yeah, that's true. And just, you're true. right. It's something well, that's, that's going to take forever. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that don't have instant results, but we need to take steps to, uh, as a country, now, now, to now how many our, our image diplomatically with the world because we just look like a big bully now, okay, and now, rightfully so, and, and okay. the more this war goes on, the worse our image okay, gets. Now, anyway. Okay, now, now let's just do, just let's do a little bit of bottom line math, okay? okay. How many soldiers, how, how many human lives have we lost in the war? I mean, by we lost, you mean Americans? American Americans. Well, going by this, um, I would say over ten thousand. Okay, but 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 you will say soldiers four thousand. Yeah. Okay. In, in, action. Action. in, in action. Okay. Okay. Four thousand. Well, let's just call it four thousand. Let's be very conservative. Very conservative. Okay. All right. So so that I mean we are not exact. We're doing anything but exaggerating. Okay. All right. Yeah. Four, so we're saying four thousand. That's really a, a small number. Okay. And then how many Iraqi lives have been lost? Can can we military and uh, civilian. Uh, civilian? I think it's 30, oh, 40, no, 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 over half a million. Yeah. If Holy I'm not mistaken, seriously. Okay, over over half a million. He thinks it's over half a million. You think it's thirty thousand? I think maybe some more closer to half a million is is correct. I, I, would, you, I mean, to be conservative, mm -hmm. I would like to say hundred thousand plus. Hundred thousand plus. Okay, we're probably looking in the hundreds of thousands. Yeah. At least okay. in the hundreds of okay. thousands. Certainly, military and civilian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and yeah. let's not. I mean, that's. We can't just include people actually shot by American bullets. Mm -hmm. I mean, starvation, disease, mm -hmm. crime, everything mm -hmm. goes along with this. Chaos. Okay, all right, all right. If we if we could, if we could have a a head on head on a stick parade. Right. All right, through the streets of Baghdad, uh, that would include. Um, Fifty heads. Mm -hmm. uh, that would include a hundred heads. That would include possibly five hundred heads. Would, would that would that that would be pretty all inclusive? I think that would be. I think that would really be. That get, would probably be enough. Getting, if we if we could if we could cause something which had uh, five hundred heads paraded on a stick, mm -hmm. and and we would have that horrible loss of life to have to. Uh, 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 what is it when the state kills somebody? Execution. Yeah. If we if we have we had five hundred executions, mm -hmm. and it could stop it, and stop the loss of life now. Right. Would that be worth it? Oh, definitely. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, sure. And even if we could do less, even as I said before, just. 
figuring out who these people are and really confronting them on a massive scale and trying to really change. This country just has to change its attitudes. People really need to say America's not number one, um, you know, because well, in some ways it's not number one. Well, and that's what gets us in trouble is thinking we're invincible because we're not. Yeah. We're, not we're, we're not invincible? Yeah, the only, yeah. Thing, the only thing that really right now that we are number one myself. is in military might when it comes to I feel education, when it comes so, to uh, me. social reform, when it comes to all the other things, we are down on the totem pole. But that's right. When it comes to military might, that's where we say we're number one. That's where we say num we're number one, but one of these days... We're gonna lose one of these wars, oh, yeah. and, well, well, and we lost and, Vietnam, and we still didn't learn. And we still didn't learn, and this and this is basically a stalemate the way I see it. So we we need to just end it. It's not worth it the way I see it. I watched. Uh, I, I spent a good while last night watching uh, videos from an outfit you may have heard of called Truth Out Now. Okay. Yes. And uh, and they were doing they with their interviews with. Uh, returned soldiers mm -hmm. that had a story to tell and the stories were horrific these people have been scarred for life sure and um and and uh i, I don't know what to say but go and i don't even know what it's called it's the interview it's the interviews with the returned soldiers uh truth out now mm -hmm. uh it's on the internet well i like it's even hollywood is um uh they have done it for a TV movie or something I saw at Steve's house that was being advertised based Stop on Stop loss. Stop yeah, loss. Guy coming they back mentioned that too. Go back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And, but I actually, one of the problems with those movies is they're not getting very good play. I mean, there have been a couple of those anti war modern day movies, but uh -huh. they're not really getting it. And I think they're approaching it from the wrong tact. Well, go ahead. Well, it's just that, as they always say, the greatest weapon is laughter. I guess that nothing can stand. I think we need a Kelly's Heroes for the the problem. Um, the the problem is it's not funny. the yeah. The problem is yeah. is it's it is so horrific that it's really hard to tell the truth and and remain. I'm 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 not even there, and I'm losing my sense of humor yeah. over it. You know. Well, part of the biggest problem is the apathy of our society. The American public has become a consumer sheep. And as long as they have their feed and their fodder and their water, they don't care. They don't want to. They don't want. They're they're afraid that if they get out and voice that something's wrong, right. it may cost them their paycheck. That's right, and it may, and it may. And but people, yeah, but people true. are going to. But people need. People need to wake up and be, be willing. You know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. You know, it's it's going down the tubes. It's it is going down the tubes. Keep your just keep your mouth shut, and it will go down the tubes. And don't think that the next regime is going to save us. That's just a smokescreen. The next regime is not coming in to save us. The next regime is going is going to to uh, want to have all the same powers as the last regime had, and 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 stuff like that. There may be some. There may be some improvements, but and 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 I and I pray that there are, but. The basic problem, they're not, they're not fixing the basic problems. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I agree. And if they do repair them, they'll probably only do maybe 20 or 30 percent of the repair at best <laughs> and still leave plenty of wide open loopholes where still corruption and whatnot could exist. I mean, if you look at the housing crisis... A lot of it's from deregulation of the mortgage mortgage industry. The mortgage industry. <laughs> the mortgage industry, which set up these people, these brokers to and lenders to do what they want to do, which is what they did. No, see, <laughs> or, or what? Or what I, have, I have to disagree with that. Okay, 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 okay. It is not the quote. Okay, well, it is a banking industry, but not the way you mean. Yeah, it's, okay. it's the lending industry no, or no, what? Or no, what? No, okay, no, I'm sorry. The shearing industry. No. The shearing. Yeah, industry. that's what I'm talking about. Fleecing. <laughs> it's all about fleecing. Yeah, but I, was, go. <laughs> I was. An, I was an economics major. Now, every time a person you're went out there, kidding. Yeah. But <laughs> London School of Economics. And every time somebody went out there and filled out a loan, they put down how much they make and all that. So these banks, with their computers, before they started to jack up the interest rates, they knew. 
I guarantee you, when they sat in their corporate offices, they were sitting there going, okay, 20% will lose their homes, 15% will come to almost losing them. And they sat oh. there and they said, well, gee, you know, it's time to shear the sheep, let's raise the right. interest <laughs> to where people lose for, their homes. They're I mean, by month. And think about right. it. Um, right. Oh, so, sure. You know, I agree. Uh, so a, a person buys, a, uh, say, a $200,000 home. He's got five thousand dollars invested into it. Now I raise your interest where you can't make your payments. You, you got, walk it. And I just looked it up. That's online. right. According That's to, exactly what happened. According to the CNN. Oh, okay. Six hundred and fifty-five thousand. Six hundred. According was, to CNN. Right. From CNN is reporting six hundred fifty-five thousand Iraqi casualties since we oh got there. Oh my god. And oh, okay. that's, You know that's like half the number. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's not. It's yeah, over Vietnam made multiple. Yeah. Yeah. I was right to call it's, it hundreds of thousands. Yes, you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can say oh, hundreds of thousands. Fifty-five thousand Iraqis. Okay. Right. How many died in 9/11? Three thousand. Three thousand. All right. All all yeah. Right. Add all the nine eleven people to the to the to the. It's still only seven thousand, and we killed half half the people supposedly on that plane didn't die in nine eleven. Yeah. Seven thousand. 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 Seven
Now, when we went off the gold standard, America went, oh, yeah, we're now real rich. Our gold went from 35 an ounce to 500 an ounce. Right. But with no standard of what our money is backed by. See, that's what's the difference between, we're in the Great Depression. I don't care what anybody says. The only difference is because we don't have our money backed by gold anymore. We're just printing more and more. Right. Okay. Now, wait a minute. Now, let me have a chance to talk because I, I wanted to address that printing more and more. The government is getting ready to hand out all these earned tax credit refunds. Right. You know, and what just dawned on me is what they're going to do in order to hand out all these earned tax credit in, in, refunds is they're just going to print up a bunch of money and <laughs> hand it out. Now, in the short run, maybe that is going to boost the economy, but in the long run, it's not going to do a darn thing for anybody. You know, the, and and that's, uh, so that's just, that was that just crossed my mind. You know the great growth industry I might get into if I get enough capital together? The what? The great growth industry in the next couple of years? Cancer? No. no. Um, <laughs> buying wheelbarrows and paying the word wallet on them. And handing them out wallet. Oh, uh-huh. well, yeah. Well, well, that's what was happening in Germany. Yeah. Yeah, after the war, you you got paid twice a day, once at twelve and once at the end of the day. So you could carry it home and. Well, yeah. no, that way, no. So at lunch, uh-huh. you could go and buy something because by by supper time, uh-huh. it, the price of that bread may have tripled in value. That's right. I know. I heard. I heard such rumors too. Now, guess what time it is. Is it time for a roll of some sort? Let's see. Let's can see if see if Brother Christopher can decide what time it is. What time is, is it? Four twenty. Huh. Uh oh. No, it can't be four twenty. Okay. It? Well, it, if <laughs> if, this, if this show started at two a.m. in the morning, which it which the rerun will, oh yeah, the repeat, oh, it'd be then it's getting ready to be four twenty. So that so that's the time that we take a little break from from the show and and we go to the the four twenty roll and we let you see a little uh, uh, it's a little segment of similar to an anarchy TV a little mm-hmm. little pre recorded roll in while we take our own little. Uh, uh, 420 roll. Uh, break. Yeah, unfortunately, this is going to be brown. Let's see. Okay, let's see what am I doing here. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working mm-hmm. on it. But I will, I will find it. Uh-huh. And I have. I have found it. And, uh, and I will make it happen.
sun in the middle. <laughs> come back into Asheville. Mm. I've had my two and a half month vacation at Steve's. You know, it's so funny. I said, Lord, I need a vacation off the streets. Within a couple of days, I'm staying at Steve's. Now that weather's going to change, hopefully, <laughs> uh, boom, I'm back in my camp. Uh, mm. Well, this weather's time. been pretty nice. Yeah, it's really yeah. nice. We may Side get some rain, snow tomorrow. I don't know. Yeah. It'd be nice. It's my birthday. I'd like to, like to, right after the end of my show, I'd like to see about it. Mm. Oh, half a foot of snow or so. My birthday's next Wednesday. Is well, it? Are you? Age. Oh. I'll be tur turning 35. I'll be 24. Mm. See, actually, you got to reverse my notes. <laughs> you got to reverse it. <laughs> So I'm 35, yeah. You know. <laughs> I'm a three and a five. Yeah, it's just the order you just pick. Guess it. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, there. actually, I feel about 12, so oh, yeah. yeah. I've never gotten past, I don't think, my teen years. Well, it's probably better to feel young. Oh, yeah. Rather than. When I get up, sometimes I have to say, Body, you're young. I don't care about the pains and my of arthritis in my foot. I don't feel that no more. Get to walking. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a plan. So I've been working on some backgrounds for you that I was saying I'd like to bring by. Uh huh. I was actually working on a new idea this afternoon, and I hadn't actually planned to com coming up, but Jonathan called, so. Oh. But uh, I should probably bring it by tomorrow. Uh huh. Okay. Well, then maybe we'll see you for tea again tomorrow. Yeah. With with a background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you got all cleaned up and everything today. You may even notice I didn't even shave. <laughs> well, I try to get cleaned up the days I don't have to work. How bad? How bad do I look on TV when I don't even shave? That, that, oh, yeah. You can't that. tell. You, can, you keep it far enough. I, 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 I was zoomed in earlier, though. I'll show you how far I was zoomed in. I was zoomed. Yeah, I was zoomed in that far. So I'm. Eh. You can't really yeah, see. You can't really tell. But zoom in that far. Oh well. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> Anyway, I look like what? I look like a woolly booger today. So. Woolly booger. Yes, yeah, woolly oh, booger. <laughs> nice thing about the dread in the, in the beard, I don't have to worry about combs, you know. Mm. Or having to shave my beard. I only did it a couple of times in the last 20 years. Oh, it probably makes it easier for you to get out of the house in the morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get out of the camp in the morning or whatever you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Wherever you may be. Oh, it's nice, you know, I lay down like on my pillow. Yeah. Why not? Right. Okay, so what so you been up to? You've been making backgrounds for me. You've spent your whole yeah. life devoted to making backgrounds for me. Earlier, Michael was sitting out there, and I tried to get Michael to come into tea. Come and, in? and he wouldn't, he never did, he didn't come into tea. And, you know, and I had this whole rap, like what I was going to talk with Michael about. I was going to talk about, you know, how creative the show that he and, and your father do together, you know, and how artistic they are. And yeah. I was going to go on and on about all that kind of stuff, but see, he didn't even come in. Mm -hmm. You know. That's mean. Yeah. You should have showed up. You're always giving him kudos. Yeah, well, I think we have a. Well, I think we. I think we really enjoy each other, you know, and uh, 
and stuff. I get that impression. But, uh, you know, your father's always sending in stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> Michael will send me, you know, goofy emails and things like that. Yeah, he sends me a lot of goofy emails, I'm, too. I'm always sending emails to both of them. Uh, usually, I mean, it's usually just whatever I run across. On, you know, I run across some, some little YouTube thing or something. I'm like, oh, you want to see this, you know. <laughs> What was it we were looking at? Jonathan showed me that ninja thing. Yeah. <laughs> the, the running thing where they run and jump. Well, and... you guys were showing me that, but he oh. had that little joke one that he sent to you. It was like, everywhere there's a ninja, and the two kids were at the party, and the kid's behind him drinking his drink, and he can't see. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's just, it was just a still. It wasn't a, it wasn't a video. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. No, it was cute. Right. Right. I found that I spend way too much time checking emails and not actually getting anything done on the computer. Indeed. I'm just... You get sucked into the YouTube or something. Oh, me too. Every five minutes I'm like, oh, I got business to do and then I'm like, I gotta look at a video and then it's all over. Oh yeah, I spend hours and hours. Once I get on it, I start, I start clicking or I, I go to my email and I start looking whatever my first email is. It's probably it's usually something it's like on eBay or something. I'm like, okay, and so what is okay? No, that's too expensive. No, that's not the right one. It won't do it. Da 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 da. Whatever. And then I'm, then I'm with, well, maybe we'll look at this or that or what? What else does this guy have? So I, I wind up looking at too much of that. And then the next is you got a message from from somebody at MySpace, and so you know some some um, some large breasted girl from Argentina wants me to go to her other site and see her pictures, you know, and I'm like, cancel, you know, <laughs> but as long as I'm over here on my, so who's online, you know, <laughs> it's like computer ADD, right, and so I'm off on, I'm off on that, and like, you know, two hours later, it's like, oh, yeah, but back to the email what is the next email you know <laughs> and off and on and go and then you know it's like it's like three in the morning four in the morning and oh man i've got to run a new new 420 roll for tomorrow and there's no way that i, I mean and i'm thinking can i edit it up can i yeah it, but there's no way it would render in time so i was like yep with that know, idea and, and then besides which good night you know. i don't know how that is so no I think I need a clone of myself just to sit there and check emails and sit online. It could be a whole lifetime, mm -hmm. never leaving the computer. <laughs> Perhaps a social secretary. Something. Or being stuck like I am, I, I can only get on the computer when I go to the public library, and this library only allows you one hour. No, actually 55 minutes. So I have no time to be able to download anything or upload anything up into the internet. But the glow lady says she'll do some of that for me. Plus, Jonathan says we'll be on the in internet by September. Yeah, I just heard that. Yeah. So as good. far as what, though? Just streaming I, video? I don't know exactly sure what URTV is mm -hmm. going to do, whether it's going to be like the TV station mm -hmm. or how to do it. You don't, ha you don't have a computer, you don't have a laptop, do you? Mm -hmm. So, if anybody would like to donate a Mac laptop, uh, just see me anywhere downtown or at URTV 20. Yeah, I wouldn't mind one either. <laughs> well, that, that, pot, that cup of tea was downright cold. Is the tea in the white pot cold? It's Let's see in the, the middle. White. Did you try some of that one? This yes. One? Okay. You got it. Oh, it's warm. Yeah. Te it's absolutely tepid. No yeah. doubt about that. Okay, well, I'll just try this. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see how this is. Yeah. Oh, that's quite good. Yes, it, it's a little strong. I mixed mine with mm -hmm. that one. Yes, let me have some of that one, too. I think it should be mixed. And this is probably a bit strong, too. It probably has a bit of a bite to it, doesn't it? All in all. Well, I think the sugar masked it on mine, so I can't remember. Well, it, it does. It helps to mask it. The cream also would if I had any, you know. But the, the sugar mostly helps the flour come to life, too. This why I always recommend it. it you know, when, when the, the, both of the flowered teas. Oh, yeah, really? one of the guys, well, one of the guys is uh, going to be doing it in, at the beginning of May. He told me to give him 10 DVDs, and he's going to be selling them at a kiosk. So I'm going to take my last show, my last se of last season, and I'm going to get 10 of them done. What, sell them at, like, a, at a mall or something? Yeah, he's going to sell them oh, yeah. $20 each, uh, which I will get $8 from each DVD. No, I'll get 12 if I print my own DVDs, 8 if I have him do it. 
<laughs> so I think for the extra four bucks, I'll make my own DVDs. Why not? I just got to get some cover for them, so I'll get what's to to do that printing. Yes, hopefully, <laughs> come May, you'll be able to get the Mad Mother Mumford for your own self. I can't actually play a little bit of this piece, but I'm like way out of practice. So, but I, I, that's, but I was playing it and making those faces all at the same time. It's a great show. <laughs> <laughs> need to get some of this guitar and play a guitar, air guitar. Huh? Do you have any instruments here? No. I should bring you my keyboard. <laughs> it's got the little synthesizer. Is it little bitty it? keys like that? Oh, no, no. Oh, it's, it's full it's size like keys. Big. Okay, if this got full size keys on it, Oh, it's, 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 a real, it's like that big. Yeah, come play it. I had Jonathan over playing it and he was killing himself because he got the little button that goes DJ, 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 DJ. <laughs> and it makes like a uh, record popping sound. It says that? DJ, DJ. Yeah, when you hit the keys, it makes different noises. Oh. Actually, did you hear um, what my dad did on the show for last week? Or was it last week when everybody got kicked out? Cox Avenue? Or when you guys had to leave or whatever the situation was? Did you see that show? No, I didn't see that show. Yeah, we did a little you, song off the keyboard. <laughs> you can, well, you might... Well, you. No. He's gonna post it online. No, I'm I'm over the Cox Avenue thing. Oh that, yeah, that's just um, I didn't I, know. And I understand they're going back there tonight, and it's gonna be a really it's gonna be uh, um, Kurt's band. Second chance. No, well, no, Kurt's band is going to be the band on on. Uh, um, on Mount Dungeon. Mount Dungeon tonight. Oh, yeah, really? the uh, one, uh, Rat Jackson. And they're going oh. back to Cox Avenue tonight. Yeah, and they're going back tonight, but. I'm just, I'm just over it. I'm, I'm, I'm at the point where, f for myself, and for uh, Mount Dungeon, and for basically most all of these kind of things, we need our own spot. Yeah. We really do because it's just, you know, we don't need to, we don't need to compete with a basketball game. We just don't need to compete with a basketball game. Yeah. If we need, if if we need to compete with a basketball game, we don't need to be there. We need to be. In our own space, where basketball game doesn't even exist, and 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 your dad's projector, That's should, what I, was I think, should be part of. It. I've been trying to tell the guys, and I told them one, even if it's just one week, just for some sort of weird celebration, if we could rent out an area should, and just pop it up. With I think projector. we should try to make it a regular thing. I think well, I think we should it. have our. I think we should have our own space, our own space, our own club. And then, it, then we we might even want to start videoing uh, the Mount Dungeon episodes there. You know, as far as that goes, we could we could have we could have a, a, a like a staging area mm -hmm. that had, that had, that had the wall behind it painted blue, and then we could pull have something we pulled out that could be the screen. You know, and and we could do our the, our video in there and our screenings there. Mm -hmm. You know, that'd be awesome. And that it, and it just be our club. You know. I thought it would be really, we, um, where was I? I stopped over at the Biltmore Mall, and they had so many little shops where they just... Biltmore Square Mall, and they're empty shops. Empty, well, like, AB Tech is <coughs> one where it's closed off, so they're not going in there to shop any, or do oh, yeah. anything, so why couldn't I've you have, a, um, I've seen over by... Uh, why couldn't you rent out a space like that? They're so cheap, too. Oh, I know, and I just saw a couple of businesses that closed out by, uh, I mean, you couldn't stay late, the, though. Uh, um, yeah, you could. Japanese restaurant yeah. area. If, in the mall, though? Yeah, there's restaurants that stay open in the mall till late. Really? Well, it used to be. What the, oh, I can't think of the name of it, but there was that one that I used to go to, and it was, I think it's still. Well, I was thinking if you were to if you were to really seriously rent out a small area for something like that, where it was closed off, people could come in and watch screenings mm -hmm. or something and pay like two dollars at the door or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think or you maybe wouldn't we, be able maybe to we do should it talk to the people ever. that are running the cinema. The Cinnabar, is that what it's called? I was thinking about something like that. Because the yeah. Cinnabar were they were that was rocking. You went to that, didn't you? Not you, you didn't get to the thing at the Cinnabar? No. Oh, you heard about it? I did hear about it. It I was, was great. And you heard everybody had a really good time, right? No, I didn't hear much. My dad wanted to go, and then he said he couldn't go. Uh, something, something. Well, everybody had a really good time. He was like, that. "Go, go, go!" And I ended up working. It, so. it turned out to be. It was kind of fun. It was a. Yeah. It, uh, that was the. I so, really like that setup. Over so there. far, it was the most successful event, in in sort of our group of of, of people being basically the music video people. Right. You know, well, didn't was, they have? It a, was the most successful event I've seen so far. 
Really? Did they? Yeah. Don't they show, or didn't they at one point show some of the Rejects films over there or something? Or I don't know. It? I didn't go to a Rejects festival. No, I've not been before, to before. Before the movie, I went in there one night, and I thought it was from the Rejects festival uh, that they showed. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't really attend any of the Rejects for your show to start? stuff. You know, I think it would have cost me money to go to the Rejects things. You know, and I, I'm, I'm base. I'm really, really poor, and so. I rarely go to anything. The, I mean, they actually gave me a ticket or whatever to that, so I went to it, you know, I mean. Yeah, was, I was thinking of doing, uh, talking with Lily, doing something like a uh, uh, $3 ticket to be, you know, to, to come in and be in the audience and having a door prize. Uh, you know, and take a dollar from each hmm. ticket for URTV, a dollar for Glow Lady, and a dollar to go towards the uh, door prize. The mix is pretty interesting, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. I bet. I think we could see comfortably 10 people in there. That's 30 bucks. Get a $10 little door and prize. And where in the... Yeah, so you like. Just for the live show. Yeah. yeah. And I figure, you know, I hate to say it, but, it, but it's true. You know, the Lord one time showed me about wisdom, you know, about sharing all the things I knew. And the Lord said, the reason a lot of people don't listen is not costing them a dime. You know, something given freely is not valued. So I figured if we it's actually true, had a like charge novelty. to be in the audience for Glow Lady, maybe people, and maybe some of the other shows should do the same thing. Maybe it would encourage people to come, you know, it's like, oh, this is free, oh, it's not going to be any good. But, oh, this three bucks, you know. I mean, it seems in our, the mentality in our society, it's like I'm going to do a bit on the show tomorrow night, you got to watch this about uh, a certain orange juice company and how stupid they think the American consumers are. I'm going to do this bit about it, you know. I've been, I've been telling the consumers they're dumb. Now I'm going to show them from the actual side of the manufacturer how dumb they think you are. Because we have become a dumb society. I mean, come on. We're still a society who bought rocks and called them pets. <laughs> and back then, two bucks is what they were going for. And it was and just a regular rock. It wasn't no special rock. Just and you rock. think that's dumb? Yeah. I really do, you know. Come on. I am two bucks highly for offended. a pet rock. <laughs> Yeah, how many pet rocks you got? You got a whole kennel full of them, don't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I saw that mountain of rocks behind your house. <laughs> I live on a rock. It's well, called a mountain. Well, well, we, now, we're, now, the Japanese are almost as dumb. At least they were buying $200,000 for a boulder here to be shipped over there. I thought about robbing a bunch of land for the boulders, you know. The well, the thing is, you get a boulder, one of those great big rocks and like that. I mean, how you got to keep it fed and all of that. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Cleaning up Pretty after Pretty little it. monster. <laughs> keep cleaning up. When it hits after. those teenage that's years, you, it's all over. That's why you put it in his Japanese garden, you know. It's got all that sand <laughs> and nibble on. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's a thing. Some... some, some uh, some Zen gardens and stuff oh, yeah. like that. I'd like to see some more Zen gardens and stuff around town. Yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah. I don't really understand the whole Zen garden. Well, the I mean, they even sell little ones. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. But what are... I mean, I get the concept, but the, what are you really supposed to do? Just sit there and... Well, the concept is play in you the... start to... Do, <laughs> you let your spirit flow as you do your design, and then you meditate over what you've done, what's come mm. out of your... the essence of your spirit. It's for me every time I do one. They're just fun. Okay. They're just a fun. It's another one of those novelties we could get for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just buy a bucket of sand and get yourself a rake, you know. Yeah, you can... Hey, you know, you know what? A little handful of rocks and, like, a little jar full of sand and, like, so, sort of a little box or spot somewhere you can do it, you know, and maybe a stick or two, uh, you know. Eh, I know. You can do it. And if you've got a spot... Like in your backyard, and like some pea gravel or something, you can. Do, 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 do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. But how much were they selling the little ones? That were like twenty five, thirty bucks for a butt, little sand, little rock, little, little this little rake looking thing so you can yeah. just do. But don't, yeah, I wouldn't say to go. I wouldn't say to to go buy the little kit. I would just say go and get the th make you know go make your own. Do yeah, go find your own little rocks and the, some sand and some whatever it is you want to make it out of, and make yourself like a little bench. So that you can sit out there in, in in your little Zen garden and you know curse the weeds that grow up between your rocks. Whatever. Whatever. I tell you what, kids now are missing out on the fun because going out in your backyard making mud, just making a mess, is more fun than anything. <laughs> and they're not allowed to make mud anymore. Well, they just don't. 
They just don't do it. You know what? I'll tell you what. I got a video you, game to beat. Exactly, oh, no. exactly. Anyway. That's the point of it. Kids don't even like go zombies. outside. <laughs> the kids don't even go outside no. anymore. They sit in front of the video game. They're missing. They're missing the real world entirely. Yeah, oh, they yeah. don't roll in the mud. Chris, out your friend throws some mud at him. The kids. So much more fun. <laughs> kid, kids do not. Kids do not stay up till nearly midnight on summer nights playing hide and go seek anymore. Yeah. I used to love doing how, that. How, yeah, in the how, middle of the night, you go hide under your neighbor's car and like grab him by their ankle and they're free. <laughs> how can they, how can they ever? How can they ever? develop as human beings if they don't do that. They don't have any no, they, creativity They're or just going to be in front of the television set. Oh, man, we're doomed. The, we're, it's a doomed generation. Very true. It's true. I don't know. All right. This, is, this, is, this has been one of them kind of shows. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, we're all doomed. Yeah, Quick, I'm, go make some mud. Yes. Find yourself. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I've been, I've been sitting here hogging. Uh, you know, what happens is I don't, I don't look at the screen very often. And uh, I'd left you off the. We're back. There you I'd, I'd left you off the screen just entirely. There, I'm sorry. It's all going. It's all right. Human right. voice, but where is he? I forgive you. Um, yeah. Well, without Igor here to point, and I thought we were going to have Igor today. I thought that Adam was going to come back. He said he would, but perhaps I was supposed to give him a ride. I don't really know. Mm. I'm not. I'm not always completely. Um, I'm lucky to get myself here on time. <laughs> and, you know. Sometimes. I can understand that. I'm lucky to get anywhere right here. Right Try to get somewhere on time. Yeah, I went and had my picture made for the Faces of Asheville. That was a oh, really? that was a very enjoying ex enjoyable experience, and uh, it's over now. Too bad that it's over now. And now and now I'm plugging it, of course. But we can be looking forward to what, to the exhibition and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, I want to see. I'm on it. I'm in it too. I went and got my picture John encouraged me to go, and I didn't easy. even have nowhere to start. So. When he was telling me about it before. Did Jonathan go? Oh, no, not, uh, I don't know if he did, but oh. John from Mount Dungeon. Oh, did he go? I wonder. I don't know. I don't know. Well, anyway, we anyway, I went and I took one of my microphones, not this one. but the, Awesome. The, so you get to do like a little personality kind of shot? Or? Yeah. That's awesome. They all are. That's cool. And I looked at, the, the, there was only like a half dozen, maybe eight or something up on the wall, and uh and like there were there were at least two or three people that I recognized, you know, that I knew that were up on the wall, and, and you know, one of my friends had a ukulele, <laughs> you know, and things like that. I thought it was cool. I'll have to check it out. So it's a it's getting close to time to run the the end credits, but I'll wait. Oh, I'll go ahead and run the end credits, and then and then uh, 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 we'll come back. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, may as well, you know. They don't have to be exactly on time because there's no there's no way to make them exactly on time. We'll just uh, uh, let's see. We're gonna take a walk. <laughs> huh? I so said we're gonna take a walk. Not we're really. We're gonna take a walk. Okay, let me see. Good morning. Welcome to the Pleasure Saucer. <laughs> Theater, five. Hundred bucks, and you find out one of the kids actually made his for like twenty. Hmm. I like the little window. You could mm -hmm. you backwards. You can't mm -hmm. backwards. <laughs> no, I said I'm backwards. I don't know which way my hand's going. I know. That's always that way. We're used to looking <laughs> in mirrors. Yeah, yeah. Well, that doesn't work so like, like a mirror. Wait, I'm yeah. confused. That works the opposite way from well, a like, mirror. Push the well, button. The only way you're seeing yourself on TV is the only way you're really going to see what you look like. I think I have to look on that side. Yeah. So we'll just let we'll let the we'll let the end credits roll like that in the in there in its little window while while we listen to a little bit of Bach in the background, which is always nice. And uh, and and we've enjoyed having tea today. I hope you've enjoyed having tea. I think we had a killer show today. I, I wish I had seen it earlier, but thank you again for showing the chicken video. Yeah, you missed the chicken video. I would miss it. Let me tell you, it's a, it's, see, there's this little chicken, and, and, and the chicken goes to the doctor and says, I can't sing and dance. And it, oh, yeah, I've seen it. It's pretty uh -huh. good. I've heard of that. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's really good. What crazy crack of a comic or something like that? Mm -hmm. And so the doctor says, don't, 
don't worry, we got it, we got it knocked, you know. And so it's like this this operation, with a very bloody operation, <laughs> with, with the scissors and stuff, and, and, and eventually the little gadget starts working. And <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm part of the new generation. My mom says I can't watch that. We get that channel blocked. <laughs> The parental chip. <laughs> the the V-chip has got it. Huh? I can't watch gory chicken videos. All right. Well, this the show is almost over, and it's time for us to say that, that, the, that the Mad Scientist Tea Party is based on uh, proven scientific fact. What is it? Is a, it's a proven scientific fact that uh, uh, things are more like they are now than they ever have been. And, uh, and uh, we'll be back, I reckon, tomorrow. Uh with more proven scientific facts and uh, maybe good rants and good guests. Maybe, you know, the mushroom man tends to come in on uh, Fridays. Yeah. And on the 18th, we're supposed to have the girl that did the photography for the, uh, for the faces of Asheville. She's emailed me and said she'll be back on. Oh, you, you got an email from her too. I don't know if you know it or not. Oh, okay. Let's go. But you haven't, you haven't checked your email in the last like 24 hours. Have yeah. you? Oh. See, I know that. And, uh, See, unfortunately, like I said, I have to go to the library and get that mm -hmm. one hour, and, and I have to strictly go to each one to make sure I, mm -hmm. you know, don't miss nobody. I can't spend an hour on one email. I got mm -hmm. 55 minutes. Mad Scientist Tea Party is an extension of Anarchy Television, and there is our P.O. box. Yeah. Uh -huh. The box in a box. That's it. Box in a box. You got any complaints? Uh, keep them to yourself. <laughs> Take a hike. <laughs> and we are off at 718. Uh, that wasn't too bad, was it? No. Yeah. Yeah.